Hello, everyone, and welcome. We'll get started in just a few minutes. Hello, everyone, and welcome. We'll get started in just a few minutes. Barnaby, if you're with us, you can unmute your phone. Barnaby, if you're with us, you can unmute by pressing star nine. Oh, I'm sorry, star six, star nine raises your hand. Great, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Wonderful, thank Great. you. <clears throat> Hey, um, I think we're we're ready to begin. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this, the 82nd meeting of the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Review Committee. My name is Melanie O'Brien, and I am the designated federal official to the Review Committee. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded. The recording, transcripts, and meeting minutes will be made publicly available after this meeting and will include the names of those in attendance during today's call. If you object to this, you may disconnect at this time. This is a public meeting of a federal advisory committee established by the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, NAGPRA of 1990. And this meeting is held under the Federal Advisory Committee Act or FACA and its implementing regulations. This meeting was noticed in the Federal Register on April 4th 2022. An agenda for this meeting and materials are posted to the NAGPRA program events page. I'll put a link in the chat. The Secretary of the Interior has issued a charter for this committee, which governs its objectives and scope of activities. The purpose of the review committee is to monitor and review the inventory and identification process and repatriation activities under sections five, six, and seven of the act. The review committee is also responsible for reporting to Congress on the progress and any barriers encountered in carrying out its responsibilities. With that as introduction, I'd like to start with the roll call of the members. Please answer out loud. John Beaver. Present. Honor Keeler. Present. Barnaby Lewis. Present. Timothy McEwen. Present. Frank McManaman. Present. Shelby Tisdale. Present. Thank you. 
Currently, the review committee has six appointed members. The charter for the review committee does not contain a quorum requirement and a meeting may be held with fewer than seven members present. As the designated federal official, I've determined this meeting can proceed with the six members present. I hereby call this meeting to order. I would like to acknowledge the individuals who are assisting me in conducting today's meeting. With me are two attorneys from the Department of the Interior Office of the Solicitor, Brady Blasco with the Division of Parks and Wildlife, and Stephen Simpson with the Division of Indian Affairs. From the National NACPA program, Lisa Koshelski is the review committee coordinator responsible for organizing this meeting and preparing minutes and transcripts of these proceedings. Mr. Chair, would you like to begin the meeting with a traditional opening? Yes, uh, let's do that, uh, Madam DFO. And, and uh, Barnaby's graciously agreed to, uh, to take on that, that responsibility. Thank you, Barnaby. So this morning, we want to ask the creator for its blessing and be with us as we discuss the numerous matters before the committee and Indian country today. I always do this in the language that the creator gave us, the autumn language. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barnaby. <laughs> Madam DFO, should we proceed? Yes. And um, Barnaby, uh, you can always mute your line using the same star six uh, if you if you wish to do so. How um, do I mute the line? Just go to you, star six will mute and unmute. Okay. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you. Uh huh. Uh, the first item on the agenda today, oh, Madam Chair. Excuse me. I'm sorry. It's, there's there's one thing I would like to uh, add, if we if we can, in the, the agenda. And um, I want to acknowledge that I um, forgot to uh, collect information or offer offer the members of the committee who will be retiring after this meeting the opportunity to identify topics that they would like um, or suggest that we deal with in the annual report to Congress that the committee will be preparing uh, at the end of this, uh, of this fiscal year. Uh, I apologize for my forgetfulness on this. I didn't send an email that uh, alerted them to, uh, to this particular topic, but what I would appreciate is if uh, towards the end of the uh, agenda today, we could add that as a topic. Uh, it'd be uh, old business, I guess, um, after uh, we have a chance to, uh, to talk about the, uh, the regulations and um, ask the, the retiring members, that would be Barnaby, John, and Honor, uh, if they have the time or if they have in mind already some ideas we could, we could get from them uh, and the rest of us could use in drafting the report. Thank you. Certainly. Uh, the first agenda item today is time for public comment. Every meeting of the review committee includes time for public comment as required under FACA. If you're interested in providing public comment during this meeting or at future meetings, um, you can raise your hand or send a chat to request to make a, few, a public comment. The review committee can also accept written comment for future meetings. So if you would like to make a public comment, please uh, use the Zoom feature to raise your hand. 
or you can um, put your name in the chat. We will have a second opportunity for public comment uh, later in today's meeting. Mr. Chair, at this time, I do not have any requests for public comment. Thank you, Madam DFO. Then we should proceed with the uh, next uh, agenda item, the discussion of revisions to the regulations. Certainly. And for that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn the meeting over to you. Okay. Thank you very much. We have two, at least two, um, particular sections, specific sections of the draft uh, proposed regulations that we've been uh, talking about. Um, since uh, they were first made public in uh, July of last uh, last year. Uh, one is uh, section 10.1, uh, on which the committee has developed some specific recommendations. And we have a draft, I believe, uh, to, uh, to go over uh, that uh, Tim, I think, originally compiled, and then Shelby and John added uh, sections on it, particularly uh, dealing with duty of care. I would appreciate it if, if uh, one of you would maybe take the lead in going through the document. I think it's, I know it's uh, in the meeting materials and uh, Madam DFO can probably put it up on the screen as well. Uh, and uh, just reviewing the, the comments that we uh, have drafted to make and then the committee can determine um, probably maybe even subsection by subsection, whether we should go ahead and proceed with this particular text. Is that, is that amenable to the members? We proceed in that fashion. Okay, then Shelby or John or Tim, would you like to start us looking through the text? I need someone to raise their hand on this. John, thank you. Uh, yes, um, I take it that we're looking at the uh, duty of care section then, or the, the portion. Yeah, the document stated May 4th. I, I think uh, Madam DFO will have to control it, but you can direct her to go up or down the document. Okay, I think we're on that section right now. I, I can see it. Can everyone else see that particular section? I'm just wondering, should we start at the beginning? Or do you want to, do you want to focus, if you want to focus on the duty of care section, and then we, maybe we could ask Tim to go back and go through the, the from, uh, from the beginning as well. What's, what's your preference? Are you talking, are you speaking to me, Frank? Yes, I'm sorry, John. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if we want to start, if we want to go ahead and just do it in, in order, that that's fine as, as well. Then we when we get to the duty of care section, I'm more than happy to make some comments to that when when we get there, if that if that works. Okay, either either one would work, I guess. Um, I um, Tim, we then Shelby, you you don't want to go from the beginning, or would you like to lead that? No, okay. Tim, will you um, would you start at the top, and then when we get down to duty of care, John can can step in. Um, sure. Um, at uh, two prior meetings, we had kind of looked at some of the comp the compilation of comments that we had all put together on various sections, and we had started to kind of narrow them down uh, specifically on ten point one. Um, so there's a number of, pro of recommendations here that uh, we have discussed at a couple of meetings. Um, and just going in turn, 10.1 introduction purpose, there was a discussion about, uh, that, that was a section that was uh, in the draft proposed rule. And there was a recommendation to basically use a very close paraphrase of the purpose for the statute that was proposed by the House Committee on Natural Resources when they introduced NAGPRA back in 1990 uh, to make sure that the regulations are consistent with uh, legislative intent. And there's a proposed slight reworking of that definition to put it into uh, 
and uh, several se uh, sentences. Um, do we have any questions or comments on that? Uh, under B, applicability, um, <clears throat> there was a, a, I raised an issue about that, that throughout the draft proposed rule, uh, it limits the focus of the rule on the control uh, museums or federal agencies that have control, and it doesn't include the definite or the uh, issue of possession, which is again a statutory term. Uh, the statute says that it applies to cultural items that are in the possession or control of federal agencies or museums. So this is just a recommendation to go back to what the statute says to include both of those terms as included in the statute. Um, any comments or issues related to that? I think the only um, discussion we ever recall, I think at least one discussion where we had that were the um, um, I think Stephen Simpson, one of the attorneys, um, had had an, a, a rationale behind why um, possession, I think, was dropped uh, as a term. I, but um, so we don't we don't have to go over that again. But I, I do. I just wanted to note there was a concern there about that. Uh, if no other committee members have, have a comment on that. So that would take us down to duty of care. Yeah, uh, there's a B2, which was on US territories. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, Tim. Yeah, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> there was a sentence removed in the draft proposed rule uh, that's in the current regulations that reads, these regulations apply to human remains, funerary objects, sacred objects, objects of cultural patrimony, which are indigenous to Alaska, Hawaii, and the continental United States, but not to territories of the United States. And that sentence is removed from the draft proposal. And uh, I think we had raised a question about by removing that, does that imply that the regulations do imply, do apply to the territories? So I just wanted, that, that's an issue just to be made clear. Should we just note that, that that is a clarification that we believe is needed, or do we want to try to resolve it in discussion here? Oh, I think it's more complicated than we have the time to deal with, whether it does or does not. I think that's a pretty thorny legal issue that um, I think previously the solicitor's office has implied that it does not. And I think it's more of an issue of by removing that sentence from the regulation, it implies that maybe it does. So it's just, a, I think, a request to be clear. Okay. Do other review committee members agree with that, that approach? I see some nodding there. Okay. Okay, great. So- And now we're, and now we're to duty of care. Excuse me, Tim? And now we're to duty of care. Right. Um, Okay, John, would you uh, would you go ahead and proceed with that? Okay, yes. Um, so I think um, obviously the, the we have two. Um, uh, it looks like a two rec and I would I guess before diving in, I would like what well, I guess what we see before us. I think something to really for us to consider right now now is how these are recommendations. Uh, and we can look at some of or how we consider some of the wording, but how these exist as recommendations on how we're attempting to uh, address the, the, that uh, definition of duty of care as it sits right now in the, in the, you know, in, in the draft, in the draft proposal, which I think everyone has, I think most people have had some concern that um, it wasn't or how specific it is or is going to be. Uh, we've already, I know we've already received some, at least, at least one uh, uh, letter from 
uh, a professional music from from museum community uh, have, have, that has some questions about that. Um, and so, speaking to the the portion that uh, Shelby and I have worked on, um, I think it really was to be uh, how to expand like. And that's probably longer than something there. Perhaps what's there is probably something that's longer than what the, the the final consideration or draft of this is going to be. But we certainly wanted to acknowledge and to expand that out. Um, and it looks like we've had uh, some. Uh, even uh, when we, this was presented, I forget how many meetings ago now. now. Um, but um, uh, particularly with the terminology, at least in the the, the portion that Shelby and I worked on about. Uh, highest best practices, uh, or uh, you know that maybe this is is is, is fairly vague uh, too. So it looks like there's we have a uh, a second. I don't know if it was we have two alternatives, but I guess what I, I guess what I want to go what I I've taken a made a few notes, and I guess what I want to to uh, to to go into is a good what because it seems there's that there's some concern with uh, the second part of the. The portion that we'd worked on that it that it's vague and so um what i'd like to sort of cover on that or force to think about is is that um because it looks like in the 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 second the, the proposal or, or, or thought on this um is about a, a standard of reasonable care i think and uh um which from someone working in the in the museum in the museum world um i guess i'm i'm not sure what what that you know what that means or how that's applicable, um, and you know if that if that how specific that that is, which it's kind of it's a little bit, I, I would say in some ways vague as well, um, uh, too. Um, it doesn't to me it doesn't tell me anything specific, and so if 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 the idea behind or if the 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 idea behind adding duty of care to this. Um, is to is to somehow prompt or make uh, museums or uh, you know these uh, places that are, that are that are holding uh, collections and by collections uh, I think we've we've I guess needfully and purposely focused upon what NAGPRA covers but conceivably these museums and places and I think that's it goes back to at least one of the questions or one of the comments some of the comments that we've received is that it's just not going to apply to collections of, you know, it's going to extend beyond, you know, the, the collections that NAGPRA is going to cover. It's going to, it's going to go into, I, 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 in my mind, anyway, it's going to go into these places that are, if they already particularly have a uh, museum or, or uh, practices in place, um, it's going to include all of those, those collections. So uh, obviously they have lots of questions, but if the idea is for us to, or the, the the regs are going to sort of move things forward or raise the bar um, without some sort of, and I guess I'm going back to the part about where we reference uh, the highest museum standards. And I would go, and I guess I would say that those who work in, in that particular field and whose responsibility it is to work in those fields are going to know what those are. Um, if there's a reference point that the, that the, uh, uh, NAGPRA is thinking about. I mean, it, it references uh, uh, one particular uh, a, a particular portion in the the uh, B, I guess thirty six CFR seventy nine. Uh, but if people are coming to you, and I just say not just uh, the, uh, the the NAGPRA office, but if anyone came to us on this committee, we should be able to to at, at some point say, well, here's what that here 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 here's what that here's what that means. Um, but without some sort of tangible baseline. Um, I think um, for because I'm not sure. I said I'm not sure what the standard is, and I but I think people who work in not just our the museum fields, but any field, know what your highest standards are in the you know in a in a particular field. So when I read that, and I'm not and I'm trying to to keep in mind or be sympathetic to those just coming into the field, but when you when you reference something like that or say what those are, um, they'll you'll, you'll either know where to go to find those standards, or there should be a place to go to. Of what's of what's being referenced, because without any sort of, uh, it's all uh, it can be. I want to say all it's all relative. You know, then how how do you, how do you enforce something without a without a baseline, or how do you enforce compliance? Or um, I could, as as a museum person or someone in charge of collections, I could right now reasonably think that what I'm or 
don't know if I'm speaking this in a hypothetical, but I could, I could think that I, that what I'm doing is okay um, until perhaps I'm told uh, or I'm directed uh, otherwise. Um, and, and also without a, without a standard ref, uh, reference point, you, the individual aren't, you'll have no idea what that, what that is. And I know that we can, you can, and, and rightfully, I think there's some mention of where, how native communities come in via the, uh, the, the consultation process to sort of, to sort of uh, uh, address this. Um, but uh, uh, to what degree is that, to what degree does that uh, on, uh, directly cover that that a that a, that a, stu, uh, a duty of care or a standard of care is being is being met? You see, I guess um, I guess that's the, the one of the, the questions I have, and so we've attempted to do that or somewhat to address that in the definition for the, for the duty of care that we put that we put forward to at least that we're trying to think of some reference. So if even if or if you're the happen to be the officer that has to if you're in charge of uh, uh, going to see if a museum or if, if things are, are meeting a particular, whatever the, you know, uh, standard of care, uh, there should be some baseline because how can you, how can you, how can you enforce, how can you enforce something um, like that if there's no, if there's no standard on which to, uh, you know, uh, refer. So I think within like the museum fields, if, if you're, if you're referencing something to the it goes beyond a, you know, whatever it is, a, a sort of a standard of, uh, of reasonable care into what we actually do or what's actually accomplished in these professions. And it's those standards that if you've ever, you know, been to a, an art museum and, have, you know, admired, you know, a piece of art that's a hun like hundreds of years old, or you've, you've delved into the archives and read, you know, firsthand accounts that are hundreds of years old. I mean, there are standards of care which have kept those, <laughs> which have which have aided in the in the preservation of those uh, of those materials. Uh, and I'm speaking in a in a broad sense in terms of collection because when you speak of duty of care, I mean, yes, we we want to uh, you know consciously um, look at those um, those cultural items that come from the that come from the the, uh, the tribal tribal nations and, and native communities but it extends out as a part of a larger as a larger plan it's not it doesn't exist uh, it doesn't exist in a vacuum um, and I further think we've had some conversation about uh, that um, um, that with what is being proposed in the draft about 36 uh, CFR 79, about there was some concern about uh, that has been uh, voiced about it how it makes uh, cultural items or collections available for uh, for study and that would be for I guess all the the museums and universities and institutions that to which this these regulations would apply uh, but I guess what I, on thinking on that further um, those aren't features that museums and universities all that already fall under NAGPRA but they don't already, they're, they're already, most of them are probably already doing that as a part of their mission or the, uh, um, their uh, policies and procedures that support their mission in which as they exist is there's, there's that, there's the public side to get their, you know what I mean? To get their information, to get, get their information out there. So most, most of those places, uh, are already are already doing that or have that built into their have already had that built into their um, their their practice, and so uh, if our concern is then are we going to make a, are we going to recommendation to um, um, to to somehow limit that or how that's uh, uh, perhaps more focused on uh, uh, native nations or tribal collections then would you'd have to certainly uh, consider that. But it's been my experience uh, uh, in that. On, on that side of things is that, uh, and that perhaps this goes to the consultation por portion of things, but it's those museums and universities, if they truly uh, are going into that with the, with the mindset, with the mind of really having truly meaningful consultation, then if those, those tribal, those native communities then will make those recommendations on what they feel is appropriate or not appropriate to be um, shared or disseminated in that manner. And then it's th those institutions how they if they if they want how if they're going to choose to add that via their uh, um, their collection management policies um, and that like I guess that that further feeds into their their if they have good relationships with the with the tribal nations or native native communities it's and I don't think I'm saying anything that's not known out there 
those institutions and those museums and those universities who uh, who uh, who who don't have those types of relationship with with tribal nations or native communities they're not unknown to the, they're, they're not they're not unknown to the uh, to the uh, uh, to the to the tribal nations and so that I mean with that I mean you can and a lot of those um, the, those those I guess some of those concerns that had been brought up by this uh, within this committee about um, that access to uh, or what 36 CFR you know is it allows to be allows to be open for the uh, the public. I mean, I mean, uh, that's like I said. I go back and say, and it's not saying that that it's certainly not a frustration for for native or tribal nations, but those features are built in, particularly to those institutions that are uh, that are accredited. I mean, you have to if you're going to be like an accredited, uh, I'm going to say museum. Those are are features that are built into how uh, the information or how it, how you're educating the what you're doing for the greater good of the public via you know via your your uh, uh, for for educational uh, purposes. But I will say, and although they're not covered from, they're not covered by, certainly by uh, uh, the NAGPRA regulations, you're going to find places like the National Museum of the American Indian, who uh, they have, they certainly have their their particular mission, but also they have features built into their uh, their policies and their in procedures that address those those very questions and issues in a you know in a in a, in a way that honors the really the unique nature of their the unique unique nature of their. Um, um, collections uh and it and it serves to and it serves to also serves that their particular purpose to get the uh to, to educate the public about those um about those um collections um so i'm not uh i'm not in any way personally lobbying for the the definition that we put that we, we put forth but i think further really want to say is that for the how this uh, this committee going forward, uh, how it's going to consider, you know, that type of that type of recommendation. Well, it's certainly going to be be boiled down to a much shorter uh, uh, definition along the way once everyone, once all interested parties are, are able to, to comment on something like that. But um, uh, even with, you know, like I said, with, with ours and what I've, what I've been saying, I think it's, uh, you have to cover a lot of ground in that, in that definition. There's a lot to be considered in terms of, of duty of care for, uh, uh, collection and you know, to me, I mean, it it, it goes into uh, the the respect that's paid for all all uh, cultures uh, who are represented in a collection, and it's how you know the respect that's paid. If we're talking about human remain, if we're going to address human remains, then it's the respect that's paid for not just native communities, but all all human remains that, that as they exist in the collection, and the respects to their to their descendant communities um, um, as well. Um, and so, thank, thank um, you. John, thank you. Maybe um, I think Shelby's got her hand up. Maybe she has something to say as well. Shelby, go ahead. Um, I do, but I'd like to defer to Honor first, please. She's got her hand up as well. Oh, I'd like I'm to sorry. Hear from Honor first, yes. and then I'll then I'll make a comment. Honor, please go ahead. Thank you, Shelby. Hi, thank you, thank you, uh, John, for your comments. Um, one of the things that I was looking at at the duty of care that I think is worthwhile for the committee to consider is to pivot this duty of care um, on standards that the tribes consider appropriate uh, for the um, ongoing uh, care um, uh, of their ancestors and cultural items. Um, I'm sharing to everyone uh, 36 uh, CFR 79, and I think it would be worthwhile for the committee to look down at 79.10 use of collections, um, uh, part A. And part A states the, that the federal agency official shall ensure that the repository official makes the collection available for scientific, educational, and religious uses subject to such terms and conditions as are necessary to protect and preserve the condition, research potential religious or sacred importance and uniqueness of the collection. Um, I think there are aspects of um, 36 CFR 79 uh, that are helpful. However, um, I'm particularly concerned about referencing um, 36 CFR 79 
uh, due to this section because it states that the agency, the federal agency official, shall ensure that the repository official makes the collection available for scientific, educational, and religious uses. Um, and I, I think that instead of pivoting on something that's, that's um, you know, created through the standards of federal agencies or museums, that this instead should pivot upon um, the requirements that each tribe has for their ancestors and cultural items. And in doing so, that happens through the consultation process. Um, and tribes may differ um, in how their ancestors or cultural items should be handled. But I just wanted to make the committee aware um, of this section. I think some reference has been made to it before, um, but this is of uh, uh, high concern to me. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. That's, that was helpful. Shelby, go, go ahead. Oh, thank you, Honor. I think you you really pointed out um, an important part of of uh, thirty six CFR seventy nine because um, and and John brought this out too. And I think um, John and I wrote this. I think as a knee jerk reaction to having the the definition the way it is worded now in the draft document because it's it's sounding like um 36 cfr 79 is the policy that every museum should be following as well and and that's not true and um i appreciate both of you bringing up the fact that this um, I think duty of care, uh, it's, it's a new term that's been introduced in this draft, and I think we're all kind of struggling trying to get our heads wrapped around it and also kind of to recommend um, how to move forward. And so one of the things I would like to suggest is that maybe we take this last line out of what uh, the second um, definition that John and I put together and, and maybe this should just be right up front because I know um, through my own experience, it's through consultation that we've changed a lot of, of how we care for certain collections um, that are specific to Native American collections. And that's because um, when, when rep tribal representatives have come to visit the institutions that I've worked for, we have learned so much from, from their face-to-face -face visits on how to take better care of these collections and, and the appropriate care and care that, that um, is through, you know, practices that apply dignity and respect to these collections. So I'm wondering if maybe um, we could recommend that um, duty of care should be more focused on the consultation process itself. And, um, and maybe we just start out very, you know, take what Tim did in that first, um, first um, definition and just add in something like this last sentence that, um, that John and I put in the second, um, second de definition so that consultation becomes up front and center because i think the the duty bottom line is is basically federal agencies and museums have a duty to care for their collections with dignity and respect and in particular ancestral remains and cultural items that are subject to nagpra so um i'm thinking there may be a way that we can get that up front and center and that through consultation um, standards of practice can be developed that are more appropriate or, or respectful or something along that line. Honor, I see you've got your hand up. Uh, thanks, Shelby. I think um, I, I just want to make sure I understand correctly. The suggestion there is to combine the first duty of care. I think that Tim brought up and then um, combine that with the last sentence um, in the second definition of duty of care that was proposed. 
Um, I would suggest moving the last sentence that we have in our um, proposed um, recommendation that we move that right up to the front uh, and maybe at the beginning of Tim's. And then Tim, I know had something in there about consulting with lineal descendants and so on. And, and we can refine this a little bit. Um, I think that would be something to look at. Um, the one part about that last sentence, um, it says traditional standards of care, which um, might be inconsistent where in the first sentence of Tim's that says reasonable. So something to think about is putting reasonable standards of care there or maybe uh, tribal standards of care, but just a thought as we, as we think further about this. No, I like your idea of tribal standards of care because that's kind of what I think we were, we were alluding to there were, you know, traditional tribal standards of care. So uh, yeah, in that last sentence. Um, right. Okay. Thank you both for that. John, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Shelby. Thank you, uh, Bonner, for your uh, your comments. And so, if we're gonna, uh, and I agree that the, that's a, a good, uh, a great uh, suggestion. Uh, and so, if if we move that, combine that into the the the, the first uh, statement, um, is then is that what you're proposing? Then is that going to apply? Are we going to change that throughout the throughout the the proposed, at least the proposed recommendation or wording for that definition? Is it going to it's going to be used. Is that wording going to be used throughout? Traditional standards of care. Are we going to use it throughout that? Is that the? Is that the? Is that our our thinking? Is that our, our collective thinking? I should say. Um, um, maybe it should be something your, uh, like tra traditional tribal standards. Would that be more appropriate? Is that and is that going to take the place of the uh, in substitute of standards of reasonable care? Is that what we're is that what we're we're, we're thinking? That's um, what I'd like to propose. I I was making the suggestion of. I almost wish we could <laughs> write this out so we have both of them combined, but um, just at the top to maintain reasonable care. And then in the last sentence, either replace traditional with reasonable or tribal standards of care. I, I guess my, uh, my question then is, um, um, if, we have, if we have both in there, what does, uh, what, 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 what's, considered, what's considered reasonable? If, if I'm being presented with this, what is, uh, um, what are we what are we thinking of as as what's what what's reasonable what's a reasonable standard of care if i could if i could um jump in i also and i, I think the the uh, the problem might be in the in the term standards because um the Standard sort of implies a written down set of uh, activities or do's and don'ts about how you manage museum collections, which which is is a good idea. Um, but the, if you start to sort of subdivide that by well, what's what's a reasonable standard, what's a tribal standard, what's a, a non tribal standard, and, and those sorts of things, you begin to get into um, some some difficulties. I would say it's important in the duty of care definition to have some recognition that um, museums and agencies holding these, these types of, of cultural items um, should adhere to some kind of pro professional set of standards for museum practice. But I think what we want to ensure is that though the actual practice for those items is, is also informed by consultation with culturally affiliated or geographically affiliated um, tribes or Native Hawaiian organizations. And that's 
what how we mix that wording together, I think, is the is the uh, the challenge. John, did you have more to say, Tim? Yes, and, so, okay, John. and then after, and then Tim. And just after what you had mentioned, so uh, um, and so it's the uh, and I think that's the I guess what I was getting at earlier. That's the inherent one of the inherent challenges here, uh, and I think this committee. Uh, and others have heard, and so I'm using this as an example again of, uh, of how native community, since it's now, of course, I'll mention native communities, how they've gone to some of these places. Um, and, you know, they're, they're from, like the, the, if we're talking about human remains, the, the, the looking, at, looking at going through the repatriation process there, but going and visiting some of these places and seeing um, either the, the ancestors or the, the associated or funerary objects really like in buckets on floors uh, or in, you know, in paper bags on, on floors. Um, I mean, yes, that's going to be upsetting to the, to certainly the descendant native communities, but I, but I'm saying that as well is, is um, that's, you know, that's a standard of care. I mean, that's barely meeting a standard of care. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Uh, in terms of if, if that, if that's the manner in which, um, the ancestors or human remains are being, you know, managed or, you know, in, in collections at, you know, at places like that. So I'm not I mean, people have, have seen and witnessed that. And so I think, like I said, we've got two, we got two, I guess, two moving parts here. We certainly, and Frank, as you had said, you know, we want, um, and Shelby and others, we want from the native communities to inform uh, those practices. But we also want, I think, uh, and I think that the goal of, 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 why it was in the draft or in, in the draft was to was to uh, start holding uh, perhaps places accountable for the way in which they you know in, in which they're you know uh, you know caring for collections and really moving it beyond storing it at least at, at the very basic level you know in that you know in that form or fashion which is not I mean which I, which I which I don't think is is a native community concern I think I think a lot of people would be. Uh, you know, would, would, wouldn't like to see human remains stored or treated uh, in that manner at either a museum or a university or, or however they're stored. And I would say that extends to most or all museum professionals as well, would not regard the, the hypothetical situation that you described as, as acceptable. That is not a reasonable standard of care, uh, or, and certainly it's not a uh, professional standard of care. So um, we, Clearly, that that's not, I think, what we would intend if we used either either of those words. Tim, I'm sure. Um, if I might, I just want to read through the one that I proposed and kind of explain where that came from. Um, first of all, I wanted I want to acknowledge and thank um, the department for including duty of care in the draft proposal to get us to focus on this, because I think the idea that museums and federal agencies have a duty of care for these particular objects is a good one for us to grapple with. So I want to thank them for doing that. Um, as I've discussed in the past, and um, I am uncomfortable trying to rely on what I would call universalist standards 36 CFR 79, whatever the provisions are for AAM for accreditation, those are cast in such broad terms that really go beyond what we're focusing on here. And I think those documents took so long to come up with because it's hard to get people to agree on what they want to focus on. So. A, I don't think we have the time, and B, I think it's a little bit beyond our remit. Um, <clears throat> I think we need to focus on a particular situation here, and that is that museums and federal agencies pursuant to NAGPRA have been directed to identify particular cultural items in their collections, human remains, funerary objects, sacred objects, objects of cultural patrimony, and to determine geographical or cultural affiliation. And by doing that, they have basically admitted that except for a claim, these objects belong to somebody else. 
So we need to acknowledge that relationship, that these are objects that any culturally affiliated or geographically affiliated tribe or native Hawaiian organization could take complete control of quickly. And that puts the museum in a special kind of position vis-a-vis -vis those collections. They are, except for the claim, somebody else's objects. So what I wrote was museums and federal agencies have an obligation to adhere to a standard of reasonable care while performing any act that would foreseeably harm any cultural item in their possession or control. And harm is an important concept here. I went to Black's Law Dictionary, I think it was Black's, and I looked up uh, duty of care. And that's a very close paraphrase of what they say. It's all about harm and making sure that no harm occurs. But harm to whose standard? And that is critical here. So then I wrote, this duty includes taking affirmative steps to verify the location and condition of all cultural items in the control of the museum or federal agency. And that gets to something that we as a committee have heard over and over again, particularly for federal agencies, that some federal agencies don't know where their collections are. And I think it is a duty of care under NAGPRA that the federal agencies know that. And this, I think, would nail that down, would make it very clear that that's an affirmative obligation. Second, uh, and consulting with lineal descendants or any culturally or geographically affiliated Indian tribe or native Hawaiian organization to determine the standard of care they consider reasonable. And that is that relationship between the museum and each individual consulting tribe, that's where the standard gets set in that consultation, in that joint deliberation between the museum and that particular tribe. And what we will wind up with here, I and actually it's the goal, is not one universal standard of care, but a standard of care as defined by the consulting tribe for objects that they are culturally and geographically affiliated with. One of the things that in the last few meetings that we heard, there was a museum that came forward and they talked about a project where they had rehoused, reboxed big collections of human remains that they have control of. And that was done from the, from the discussion, it was done in consultation with all of the appropriate tribes and everyone in that group agreed that this was the right way to go. And after that meeting, I was contacted by two different tribal representatives that were appalled. That they were very concerned that museums would go ahead unilaterally using that standard and rebox or rehouse all of their collections. And they are vehemently against that. They don't think that they want to minimize the amount of contact that happens with those collections. The only way that we can try to address this issue is to make sure that the relationship with each museum and each geographically or culturally affiliated tribe is what we focus on. And I think this definition would put it, make it incumbent upon the museum or federal agency to do that consultation. Now, because each museum exists in a world where multiple standards apply, federal agencies for archeological collections are still gonna have to uh, comply with 36 CFR 79. And it's a reasonable likelihood that tribes are consulted on this issue and they would be vehemently opposed to additional scientific research on them. And those are an area that need to be addressed by the individual institution. 
I don't think that that's something we can come up with a across the board solution to because it's got to be done at the ground level between the museum and the particular tribes because the resources that individual museums have vary and tribal concerns over harm vary. And that's something we need to address. And I think we need to encourage that. And the consultation process is the way, requiring that consultation process is the way to get that done. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. And I would note on that, um, I'd comment on that, on, on, I think that. I think that is a very sensible approach. And uh, yes, indeed, 36 CFR 79 still would apply to archeological, federal archeological uh, owned and administered collections. But I also would note, and this is something that uh, honors uh, reading of the section about uses of collections for the scientific use, the educational use, the religious use, does have a caveat at the end of it that can restrict those uses depending upon the circumstance, certain circumstances. So I think there is a way already within 36 CFR 79 to uh, acknowledge um, that treatment of cultural items that are affiliated with uh, one or more tribes would be treated treated differently. And uses uh, is one area where that that treatment might be might be different, depending upon what what the uh, the consultation uh, uh, resulted in. So I think I think that's doable. Honor, go ahead. Um, hi, thanks, Frank. Uh, yeah, I would suggest taking 36 CFR 79 out and completely. Uh, I wonder if incorporating that last sentence in the second definition of the duty of care, instead that we might consider the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which has been endorsed um, by the United States and instead put in something that reads museums and federal agencies have an obligation to adhere to a standard standard of reasonable care based upon uh, tribal consultation and the free prior and informed consent of tribes and NHOs while performing any act that would, would foreseeably harm any cultural item in their position, possession or control and then um, maintain the rest of the definition. But I think incorporating aspects of the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples in particular um, surrounding free prior and informed consent uh, would be a good idea uh, for this committee to consider. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, I was attempting to make a, an, a copy that everyone could annotate and work with, but that doesn't seem to be working here. I'm gonna stop sharing and suggest that somebody else share their screen and, and you can then edit collectively. Can somebody do that? One of the one of the committee members. Uh, can if you're working on that, could you just let me know so that we're not sitting here waiting for something that's not going to happen? I'm looking for it. Okay, I I thought you might be too. Do you have it handy, Honor? No, I've I'm I'm not often successful in getting things shared from this computer um, in Zoom, but I don't have it handy either. We could take a look at 36 CFR 79 <laughs> if anyone wants to read the entire thing. Um, Frank, if I might recommend. Yeah. Yep. Can we continue, can we sidebar this for a second? 
continue. You sent it in an email, it. Tim. Um, huh? You did send it in an email. Maybe you, you might be able to find it through your sent box or something. It's hard to do it and talk at the same time. Yeah, so. I know. I know. Um, <laughs> can, can we continue through the rest of the 10.1 document? And then I'll try to circle back to this. Um, yes, let's. Let's do that. I, let's, I've got the document here, right? So we've got um, delivery of written documents, deadlines, and timelines. Uh, okay. Why don't we do that? And um, by the time we do that, we might actually be ready for a, a break, or we might you might have uh, resolved the uh, the issue, and we can come back to it. Tim, do you, can you can you continue with uh, going through that? I don't um, know what sure. changes we see um, here. On uh, section D, delivery of written documents, um, states that any change in physical electronic address will be noticed in the federal agents uh, federal register within five business days. And I uh, I had put in a sentence there that doing anything in five business days and having it published in the federal reg register is a uh, pretty high or pretty uh, high bar to meet. Uh, it's hard to get anything in the register in that amount of time. So I, I think the, the deadline, I'm, uh, I'm good with the idea. I think um, doing it in that amount of time is hard. Um, e deadlines and timelines um, calculates deadlines according to calendar days, but elsewhere the draft, it, it says business days. So I think some consistency on that would be a good thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. Judicial jurisdiction, uh, the draft had included the section from the statute on the United States District Court. And there was a recommendation to also include the jurisdiction of the US Court of Federal Claims, which has jurisdiction over the use of the term right of possession uh, and in specific situations will result in a Fifth Amendment taking under the Constitution. So it just makes it clear that there's more than one jurisdiction here. Uh, final agency action. Uh, the draft um, identifies three classes of final agency action. Final determination making the regulations inapplicable and uh, final denial of a claim of disposition or arrest request for repatriation or reasonably transparent actions, where it is presumed that the federal agency would have notified the claimant that the claim was denied. It is less clear where final agency action would attach for final disposition or repatriation determinations, since the various notices published by the Federal Register are still appealable. Uh, but in the proposed final uh, disposition repatriation statement is only sent to the claimant and to the park service. We request that all statements of disposition or repatriation also be published in the federal register um, or at a minimum published on the National Park Service website to provide parties with notification that a final agency action has occurred. Basically provides notice that someone can go to court if they choose to. Um, and then information collection, it was unclear who you is in the second sentence. We recommend it to read federal agencies may not conduct or sponsor and no one is required to respond to the collection of information on, under this part unless the federal agency provides a currently valued, uh, valid OMB control number. Okay, thank you. So the what you've pointed out in the in these particular uh, subparts are uh, the committee is is basically expressing some concerns about things that the drafters of the regulations would uh, hopefully go back and, and reconsider. We're not. Uh, I guess we may be suggesting some specific solutions. In other cases, we're we're simply pointing out that these may be problems. I think there was a specific change for judicial jurisdiction because it was relatively easy to figure out what that would be. Mm -hmm. uh, the other ones are more recommendations. Okay, all right, thank you. 
and honor sent a uh, in a, a note about uh, some wording for consultation that uh, is comes from that yeah that indigenous uh, uh, statement uh, the UN indigenous uh, statement that she's been been mentioning. Okay, are we ready to go back uh, to duty of care at this point, or do we need more time to uh, figure out the technology there? I'm I'm still looking. Okay, um, Madam Chair, we just said about one hour. I, I I think that's a little soon for a break, but we could take a we could take a, a ten minute break, and uh, maybe maybe give Tim a little time to. Uh, figure out the technology there that we can come back to duty of care and do some, some uh, online drafting. Shall we try that? Okay. Okay, we're, we're one hour into the meeting and we will be back in 10 minutes. And I think Madam DFO will put on her timer. So we'll all be able to follow that. Thank you.
if everyone could start coming back. Melanie, can you turn on my screen uh, share availability? As soon as I stop sharing, you should be able to share. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Oh, great. Way to go. Way to go, Tim. Thank you. Um, I have one thing to point out when we get back uh, to the meeting. I'm sorry, I think we're ready to begin. Oh, okay. Are we are we back in session, Madam DFO? Yes, we are. Okay. Thank you very much. Just one thing. I, I we've talked a lot about consultation, which uh, I agree is key uh, in in this. Um, one of the things we talked about last week when we were looking at the um, updating of the NAGPRA inventories issue, which we'll, which we'll deal with later later this afternoon, um, is the definition of of consultation, and I think our um, agreement there was that we would uh, focus, we would use the consultation definition that's in the, um, the draft proposed regulation. So you'll, you will have seen that I did do that in the, in the notes that I put together uh, on that topic. And as we're talking about consultation here on duty of care, we might, uh, where possible, rely upon that definition or the words that are used in that definition uh, in the duty of care uh, text. Just, just wanted to point that out. Tim, why don't you go ahead and uh, um, we, were going, we were going to add... Um, um, terms. Does, does anybody know on Zoom I can see the document on my screen, but I can't see it on the shared screen. And the shared screen is now just a little box that covers up part of what I'm looking at. So it's, <laughs> it's problematic, but I don't know how to make it go away. Um, Tim, we're the seeing your, your Word document. So if you start typing in your Word document, we will see it. The problem is that the box where I see all of you takes up about a quarter of the screen that covers the text. So I don't know how to make that go away. You can you can move the box with with us. You can uh, ah, you can move it. I wish oh and here's how I reshape it. Got it. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Shelby. Okay, so what do you want me to move where? Tim, I think we have been discussing the last sentence in the second duty of care to move that last sentence up in front of the first duty of care. Um, we starting with through, through meaning full consultation with tribes? Yes.
I'm going to copy it instead of and put it there. Mm -hmm. I get too many things keep popping up that I can't quite make go away. Okay, so that's there. Yeah, that's there. I can't get too fancy on marking it because I can't see all the screen, but okay. So this has been moved. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if everybody takes a minute, to just read through, or somebody wants to read through it uh, out loud. Is that the end of the sentence there? Yes, I think so. Okay, I think I, I didn't take the yeah. period with it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, Tim and the committee, uh, if we could just scroll up, Tim, thanks. Um, I had mentioned integration of free prior and informed consent uh, based around the endorsed um, declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples. I wonder if uh, we were having a discussion earlier about traditional standards of care, um, reasonable standards of care. I wonder if um, it should read or could read um, through meaningful consultation with tribes and NHOs, federal agencies, museums, universities, and repositories shall provide standards of care based upon the free prior and informed consent of tribes and NHOs for human remains and cultural items through the end of the sentence. I think I'm lost. So. Um, I'm suggesting erasing the word traditional. Right. <clears throat> I'll go slower. And then under, um, sorry, where it says standards of care, uh, shall provide standards of care and then insert based upon the free, prior, and informed consent of tribes and NHOs for human remains and cultural items subject to NAGPRA. And a period after NAGPRA? Period, yeah. And the rest of the sentence deleted or? Um, uh, yeah, we can delete the rest of the sentence. I'm not sure how the rest of the committee feels, but I, I kind of felt that might take care of pivoting uh, this duty of care towards tribes, but we can discuss it certainly. Hi, this is uh, John. Uh, with that sentence we just worked on, can we just end it at cultural items? I think that sounds fine. Because mm -hmm. 
those that can change. Yes. You know, you yes. That would make sense. And then I would, uh, like I said, I think we're still thinking on this. And then, like I said, as we, I, and I think what I was we were sort of talking about before we uh, uh, moved on or uh, was is that being consistent with now what we're uh, what we're what we're recommending uh, uh, here, and I think it's and it's looking more and more like now that we're uh, an acknowledgement and an adherence to what uh, tribes are are putting forth in terms of their the care of those collections. Is that am I? Anyone else? <laughs> um, because I guess the question is, as we as we move through what's you know what is uh, uh, what's deemed reasonable, or are we are we are we making the suggestion that we the recommendation that we want museums or those who this is going to apply to that we we want them to to adhere to uh, the advisements that the tribes uh, put forth. Is that what we're moving, making a more strong or a firm statement in that in that direction? Um, John, is that uh, the issue of of the word using the word consent here, informed consent? Oh, I don't. Free not, informed consent. That oh no a requirement on the museums, because I, I think that might be a concern. Oh no, that wasn't uh, I, that wasn't a uh, a concern I, I was having, I think, as we move forward through the, our recommendation and, and, and definition, are we, as our, is, is the committee's, uh, is our thought process now that we want, we're, we're wanting to, that really to, in many ways, compel museums and universities, and institutions to, to really, that uh, whatever, uh, if we're, the advisements that tribes give them, that's going to be the that's what they need to, they really need to consider that and do that. Is that our, is that our position? I, I think that has always been our position. I, I, I um, well, let me, um, let me recognize uh, Shelby has a, a comment also on this. Yeah, I, John, I think that is the direction we're going in. And Tim, your explanation of your original, um, recommendation was very helpful because uh, when I first read it, I wasn't quite clear on where we were going with all of that. So um, I think I think we're getting close. I um, Because I know John and I, when, when we put our definition together, we were very much reacting to, to um, 36 CFR 79. And I don't know how you feel, John. I, I think where we're going now with with Tim's um, recommendation here, we and we may do a little more wordsmithing, but I'm I'm willing to strike what we did at this point because I think it was getting more into standards of practice and things like that. That um, and and what we really want is the duty of care to address the consultation with tribes and and you know, taking what we learned from the tribes and applying that to how we care for the collections, I think is really where we want to go with this definition. Uh, yes, I, 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 good comment, uh, Shelby. And, and, and Tim, thank you for the, the certainly those, uh, those clarifications. And so I will uh, certainly um, second what uh, Shelby has said, uh, that we were in many ways reacting to the how 36 CFR 79 was put forth or presented uh, uh, to that. Uh, and that being said, I certainly don't want to, I know we've talked about before, but I don't think it was either either of our intentions for that to be the gold standard on which uh, that, that this was going to be the, the universal. Um, but also, I think we were also grappling with and trying to address some sort of, some sort of standard to guide, guide things along. Uh, along certainly along with um, uh, but certainly wanting to put the tribe's concerns and focuses forward uh, to that. So uh, to me, I think there were a couple of different, I think what we're, some of the difficulty we're having is there, uh, there are lots of moving parts to what, what's, 
what we're thinking that's trying to be accomplished uh, or was the thought process that was trying to be accomplished with coming up with some sort of definition or something that was going to uh, uh, compel uh, people to, you know, to or, or stress the importance of tribal consultation, make, making, that a, making that a primary uh, uh, focus. Um, other other comments? Well, I I think I think we do have uh, I think there is an issue here in terms of informed consent, in the sense that that. Would be it seems to me that would be de determinative in that in in that case. And while we want to ensure that there's meaningful consultation, we want to ensure that it's results in thoughtful, mindful, sensitive, and respectful standards of care for cultural items in the collections. Um, I think I think if we were to use use those those words we would accomplish what we're trying to accomplish here but if we use the word consent it, it, it implies or it means that um, it's not it's not so much consultation as as just a determination uh, by the tribes as to what what kind of uh, treatment they want uh, for the cultural items I'm in favor of keeping uh, free prior and informed consent. Uh, I think that this is, um, like I said, something that has already been endorsed by the United States um, through the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, um, which of course mentions repatriation um, and it's consistent with, um, with NACPRA. Any other comments on them? Uh, my again, my concerns would be that it might um, it might be beyond what we can actually do in in regulation. Um, and I guess that's, that's um, it's placing and in, 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 well, there's a responsibility already on the, on the museums, but it's not providing for, um, you know, other factors that may, may apply in, in situations. Um, this is Tim. Could um, Brady or Stephen talk a little bit? There are consent requirements within the statute, and I don't have where those are uh, right here. Do you happen to know where those are? Or if they apply? I mean, generally, generally the, inter the relationship between museums and federal agencies and the tribes is that the museum and federal agency must consult with tribes in making and in joint deliberation using the, the house uh, definition and then come up with some decision. And <clears throat> consultation is not consent. Mm -hmm. But there are places in the statute where consent is required. That's my recollection. 
mostly in section two for or section three rather for um excavations on tribal oh, land. tribal lands that's that's pulled in arpa as well right so congress actually made a distinction between where consultation applies and where consent applies yes Putting consent here is a big, bold thing. Well, it's <laughs> besides that, it, it, it may just not be possible in terms of uh, that it may not be legal for this committee to do that. Well, the, com the committee can, as um, Brady and Stephen has told us, we can recommend whatever we want. But That's the right. issue is right. whether can, they can have, they have legal authority to do it in regulation. That's that is true. Yeah. Yeah, and I, putting it here actually, and I understand where this came from, and I, I acknowledge what Honor said about the declaration. It does make me a little nervous putting it here in this particular provision, uh, because everywhere else we talk about consultation and not consent. And consent and consultation mean different things in different places in the statute. So it does make me a little nervous. Well, I'm, Tim, I, uh, like Shelby, I thought your explanation of your original draft was, uh, was um, was very clear and it, and it did make, it did make sense. The, um, I think mainly it made sense the way you, you were, were using um, uh, the different, the different terms. In the situation we're talking about, um, this is a situation where uh, there's consultation between the uh, culturally or geographically affiliated tribes and the museum that uh, for one reason or another is, is still holding the uh, cultural items that are in fact uh, items that the museum, that the tribe or tribes can have returned uh, to them or have have uh, um, transferred to them at at any time. That was part of your your rationale for the way that you used uh, reasonable, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, that would be the case here as well. If in consultation the tribes asked the museum to handle the uh, say, handle the cultural items in a way that the tribe found to be unacceptable, something they could not uh, agree to, um, they could have the cultural items uh, transferred to them, where presumably they would be able to treat the remains in, in the way that they felt was, was the appropriate way. On the other hand, there may be some aspects of the museum's responsibilities that that pro would prohibit it or would make it unwilling in, in terms of how it handles museum management policy to do maybe some specific things that the that the tribe was was in, insisting upon and so um there would there would be a, I'm, what i'm suggesting I guess is there would be a way for the tribe to Rectify the situation by simply, and I realize it might not be so simple. Have the have the remains transferred, John? You have your hand up. Go ahead, please. Yes, I was just uh, uh, 
Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Frank? <laughs> Frank, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, yeah, I'm sorry. Going, yeah, I was having I had a message on my on my side that said I was still muted, but I was. <laughs> so I just wanted. To, so I, yeah, I wanted to, to follow up, and I didn't. And I wasn't and not trying to sound devil's advocate, sort of in, in any way. Uh, but that uh, to your to your point. Uh, or a question I had or a concern that I had really was is that um, with this, um, uh, the standards that a, a tribe might, you know, consider reasonable, um, I, I think that there are a, a number of places that or, or that could anyway, or that have in the past have not responded or to, in, in, in a particular fashion, um, because for whatever reason they felt whatever the the tribal uh, communities were putting forth via consultations or advisements uh, in their minds were unreasonable, <laughs> you know what I'm, uh, and haven't have not made measures or uh, great steps in that direction to 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 follow what tribes have have put forth via the uh, via sort of their their advisements. So I think if if that's what I'm hearing from you, Frank, I mean that I mean that but that was a question I had is that something stronger to compel um, um, if that's where we're going to uh, to say that you're you know um, that if a tribe provides uh, your your museum your university something uh, via consultation um, you have to do it right is that I mean is that what we're you know if, if that if we're calling that traditional standards of care or what whatever whichever definition we're, we're going to land on um, I guess that was a, a question I had earlier was, is that what will compel them to, to, to do what the tribes, um, ask, uh, even if the institution or the museum or the, the university views what's being asked, uh, via that consultation in their minds is not reasonable. Um, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's, is that, how is that? How do we how do we compel that? Because Frank, what I what I also heard in your comment too was that well, if they they're unable to do that, then they transfer them. Then well, then that's a that would be in 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 some respects or in many respects, I guess, moving forward with a with a uh, with through the re, through a repatriation process process if you're if you're transfer sure. if you're if you're doing a transfer or calling sure. it a transfer, it's all for all intents and purposes, and that would be a. Uh, I know there are there are many moving parts to that, but that sounds like a repatri sounds like a repatriation. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would be. Shelby, yes, please. So um, we've spent a lot of time on this, a, you know, a couple of meetings and a couple of meetings back. Um, I think Melanie recommended that. Um, that it might be better for us to just say something to the effect that duty, because I, I suspect the tribes are gonna have comments and museums are gonna have comments, federal agencies are gonna have comments um, that, that the duty of care, the way it is currently defined is, is confusing and, and um, really doesn't relate to museums um, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I don't, I don't know that, that trying to create a definition um, is, is, I don't know, going to be conducive to, to what we want, but um, because I'm sure this is going to go through a, a number of different um, definitions before it gets final. But I think, um, I think there are other parts of, of, of this document that, that we really need to get to. And so um, I, I wanna see what others on the other members of the committee feel because I, I think we're spending so much time trying to wordsmith the definition that um, might be looked at and might not be looked at. I'm not sure. Um, so thoughts on that. I think we're, we're just, we're still kind of in the weeds on this one. And uh, I do think consultation is, is a, a major part of, of trying to come up with a definition for duty of care, for sure. 
Other other comments, please. Hello, Honor. Frank. Oh, Barn sorry, Barnaby. Yes, who was, was okay, that? Barnaby was go. that Barnaby? Or <laughs> yeah, I would agree with. Uh, I'll be that, uh, yeah, we just need a statement. I don't think we need to try to, you know, pin down uh, language for a definition. <clears throat> and I also agree with Tim on his thought on uh, not inserting that language for from the declaration. Uh, it's probably uh, not the appropriate place for that particular language. <clears throat> But otherwise, uh, yeah, there should be just a, a general statement because here again, uh, things will change. It's still not final yet. And these are just recommendations. Okay, that's all I got. Thank you, Barnaby. Honor, you have your hand up as well. And then John. Um, yeah, I think, you know, since, um, we've been advised uh, to provide recommendations um, and it seems like the committee wants to move on. I would suggest um, Tim adding an S to NHOs, putting a period at the end of cultural items in that first sentence. Hold and on, then uh, every start again, start again. Put an S at the end of NHOs, the second time it comes up in the first sentence? Third time, yeah. Oh, third time, second time. Um, put a period at the end of cultural items. And then erasing the rest of the sentence. And, um, you know, we can aspire as a review committee to the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and free prior and informed consent of tribes. It doesn't mean necessarily that this will be something that will be accepted, but I think it's, it's good to attempt to um, reach the standards um, you know, that, that tribes would like to see for a law, the Native American Grace Protection and Repatriation Act that has been created to return um, our ancestors and cultural items. Um, I think the committee has a real opportunity in this moment um, during this next iteration uh, of the regulations uh, to do something um, that's commendable. So I would recommend maintaining um, FPIC within um, this definition and certainly uh, considering it um, in this first sentence. Um, so it's, uh, we can be, we can do this as a committee. Thank you. John, go ahead. Yes, thanks, Andrew. Go ahead, John. Uh, yes. Uh, so yeah, I uh, agree that we're uh, certainly back with, with Shelby, we're somewhat in the, well, I'll say more than some, or we're, uh, discussion and deliberation is certainly, is certainly valued. Uh, I think we're, again, in the weeds somewhat and really need to think, I mean, particularly this, uh, in terms of what we're going to recommend, even whether that, uh, what, what's even we see here uh, that we've been working on, you know, is that, I mean, that certainly I don't think right now is such as a, as a definition. So really thinking of what we're, we're wanting to recommend or uh, uh, the question of what back to the the overall question of what uh, what was what was even in its sort of its the form that we're having uh, issue with the minimal issue of, of the question of duty of care and what um, that it was included uh, I believe Tim uh, referenced it earlier that it was even included in in the regulations I'm I'm assuming speaks to some some something that's unmet in the in the in the present regulation or as, as they exist so what was the what was the thought of having that include you know even though it's a minimal definition right now what is the thought you know what what, what was hoping to, what is hoping to be accomplished by by having that 
uh, or a consideration of something like that in the uh, in the in the regulations. And is then is that what this committee wants to I mean? Do we want to support what that is? Uh, what that's going to the what was hoped to be accomplished by having that included in the for consideration in the in the um, um, the new regulations. But I agree. I mean, there we're and I mean we're important, but we're also we're one voice. We're one voice <laughs> in in this in this in this in this process. And uh, there, as has been pointed out, there there are going to be others certainly from I, I believe there's going to be more tribal uh, or comment from from tribal communities and. Uh, perhaps museums are going to have a have a question about what this what this definition means. So yeah, I support the recommendation of, of us moving forward from uh, these deeper discussions right now. But, but consider what we're going to how we're going to what our recommend, recommendation might be. And I do agree with Honor uh, that uh, this is whether it's in this iteration of this committee as makeup, which is uh, rapidly uh, the time is running is running short, um, and in the the newer iteration of, of of the committee, because I think it's it's also, I mean, I, I think it's a it's an important, it can be important that this, what this committee can stand for, or a, what statement it's going to, to make about not just the the rights of native peoples, but the rights of, of ultimately how that extends to the rights of, of of all people in terms of these deeper issues that we're talking about. Oh, thank you. Thanks, John. Okay, so um, in, uh, in terms of uh, moving, moving on and uh, trying to finish our, our work on 10.1, uh, do we wanna go back to the beginning? And uh, because we didn't check whether everyone agreed with uh, or whether there were uh, any objections to um, what we were saying in those first several uh, points. Tim, would, would you mind maybe um, just going back and running through those again? And at each section, maybe we pause and say, this, is this okay? And if it is, we go on. And if it isn't, we, we have uh, any necessary discussion. Um, if Melanie could pull that document up, because I don't want to mess up this one, because it's, it's a different document. Yes, right, yes. Madam DFO, are you able to do that? Thanks, Tom. Thanks very much for uh, the techni technical help on that. So, um, 10.1a, do we all agree, or is there any objection to uh, making the change that we're proposing here this, this, in this text? No? Okay. Applicability. Any changes to this text or comments? No. Okay, so we'll stick with that. Uh, the territories question, B2. Same question from me. No, I, okay, so we agree with what we're saying there. On the duty of care, um, not looking what's on the text here that's showing, but the text that we just discussed. Um, I just, I have just one, uh, one suggestion. Yes, yeah, Shelby, uh, go ahead. Under the introductory sentence there. Uh, the second sentence, the committee recommends using the following instead of recommendations using the following, the committee recommends. Mm -hmm. Just That's a good idea. A typo I caught. Okay. Um, and then we would use the text that we just, uh, just discussed. Uh, I do feel the need to, um, what? recognize that that uh, that I think it's unwise for us to use the word consent in this. Um, and we could simply say one member had some concerns about the text and uh, 
put that in the introductory section and then have the text as the other members seem to be comfortable with. Is that okay? And Frank, this would be the definition as we have edited, except for the, the well, consent. Actually, I mean, if you took the word consent out, you'd need to make a little, a few other yeah. adjustments, grammar adjustments. But um, yes, the, the rest of it is fine. I do, and I, I really want to make it clear to the other members and uh, the, anybody listening to this uh, meeting that I think, I also think the consultation that is you know, meaningful and direct and open and full uh, and, uh, and listened to is, is extremely important. And I think, I think the, uh, the, I think the text that we have ended up with makes that point. And uh, about that, I certainly agree with, but, I, but um, I do worry about uh, uh, putting in a consent requirement there, so that would be my only my only objection to the uh, to the uh, the text that we've come up with. But if we can put something in the in that in that first introductory section there, the, the three lines that uh, where Shelby suggested some edits that um, recognizes that, then uh, in the interest of moving ahead with our comments, I, I I'm okay. That's okay with me. Shall we continue through? Delivery of written documents, 10D or 10, uh, 10 something D. Uh, and this, and I think the following were, as we said earlier, were uh, um, concerns that we had, uh, we did recommend some particular change in the text, uh, but I think they're uh, um, pretty minor. Are there, in, in any case, are there any objections to uh, the remaining points, the deadlines or timelines, judicial jurisdiction, final agency action, or information collection? I don't believe we had any objections uh, when we talked about them. Okay, then I would say uh, the committee is in agreement to move forward with uh, uh, most of uh, the, uh, the recommendations for 10.1. And, and seeing no objections to that, let's... Uh, Let's do that. We'll make we'll make the the few edits that we uh, agreed to, and we'll send we'll send those uh, specific comments forward to the department. Madam DFO, with that, we could do this in the form of a of another uh, letter to the secretary or or uh, a memo. What do you have any thoughts on how uh, we transmit um, the the document that you've prepared? Um, uh, if you edit it and, and send it to me, that, that will be sufficient. Okay. My computer just froze. What did I miss? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, how, well, we, we agreed, I think, to the, the rest of uh, the text that we have in, uh, in uh, the 10.1. Section M, we agree that we would send it uh, with... The, with the little caveat about um, one of the members not agreeing with the full uh, the full text of uh, the duty of care, uh, we would send that up to the secretary. So, um, I guess one of us, uh, maybe I guess that might fall to me, can make those changes and send the. Uh, Send the revised, the final revised text to uh, to the National NACRA program for tran transmittal to the secretary. Is that? I don't see. I don't see anybody wants to make a comment or would disagree with that. So we'll 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 do we'll plan to do that. The next uh, section that we're going to try to deal with then is uh, 
the update of NAGPRA inventory, section 10.10. .10. And uh, there's another document that we have uh, that was prepared based upon comments that we, we had in our discussion at the May 3rd meeting. Um, I would say we, we are at, at another hour, but, but um, I think we could potentially just continue and uh, see, we may not get completely through this, but um, get, get as far through it as we can anyway. Uh, Madam DFO, can you bring that document up on the screen so people can see it if they don't happen to have a copy in front of them? So um, this is a two-page two-page document. The first on the first page at the top, uh, there is a, a summary of how it came to be that we uh, uh, that this draft was put together based upon based upon discussions we had at the May third meeting, uh, where uh, we were trying to come up with uh, text we could use for a recommendation again to the secretary about this particular section uh, or subsections of the uh, of the draft uh, proposed revised regs and uh, the specific um, topic was or is the uh, requirements for new or for updates of uh, the NAGPRA inventories that have been uh, produced by museums and federal federal agencies. In the discussion, we had a number of sort of general points that needed to be, that should be incorporated into the recommendations to the secretary. And they involved um, what it would take to uh, accomplish the inventory updates. And so, and, and some, parameters that we wanted to be sure were part of the, uh, we were recognized in the, in the, uh, in the recommendations that we, a recommendation that we might come up with. So the first three points deal with those more general aspects of uh, this topic. Uh, one being um, that, uh, the activities that museums, agencies, tribes, and Native Hawaiian organizations are asked or required to participate in be to the extent possible beneficial uh, to those organizations. So, um, and to the accomplishment of uh, what's needed to do to implement NAGPRA. So the first point simply tries to address that by identifying some of the positive outcomes that are possible uh, in crafting what the requirements are for updating the NAGPRA uh, inventories. The second point that we wanted to uh, emphasize, and we just emphasized it substantially as well in dealing with duty of care, is that consultation must be part of the process. And to go beyond that, consultation for updating NAGPRA inventories uh, should uh, reflect the definition of consultation that is in the definition sections, the 10.2 definition sections of the text uh, of the draft proposed uh, revisions that we're, uh, that we're looking at. So consultation means a process involving the exchange of information, open discussion, and joint deliberations with respect to potential issues, changes, or actions by all interested parties. So when we use the word consultation in our recommendations here, that's what we're referring to. And then the final general point we talked about at the, at the last meeting at the, the March or May 3rd meeting is that the research needed to update the inventories, as I think we agreed in our discussion and that there would be some kind of study that needed, was needed to uh, do those updates or at least some of the updates. Um, would involve, quote, 
existing museum records, including inventories or catalogs, relevant studies, or other pertinent data for the limited purpose of determining the geographical origins, cultural affiliation, and basic facts surrounding the acquisition and access of Native American human remains and associated funerary objects. <coughs> Excuse me. The requirement for such investigation shall not be construed to be an authorization of, for the initiation of new scientific studies of such remains and associated funerary objects. And that text, except for the, um, the uh, uh, part in brackets, is, is from the statute itself, which is uh, what we uh, talked about utilizing in the, uh, in the May 3rd discussion. If you then turn uh, to the second page, um, there is a, a, a discussion a discussion draft of a, what a recommendation might look like for updating the NAGPRA inventories. And um, that deals with uh, the issue of um, what's involved, what may be involved on the part of uh, museums and uh, tribes, agencies, and Native Hawaiian organizations uh, regarding these updates. The first two, the first three paragraphs point out that it will vary from case to case in terms of the um, extent of, of collections, in terms of the information that the um, uh, museums and agencies have already taken a look at and what new information they might to look, need to look at <coughs> to update the uh, to update the inventories, in particular regarding the, the geographical affiliation issue. And um, the fact that um, there really needs to be a careful, well-informed and accurate description and assessment of what the likely time and cost requirements for a successful outcome to those updates uh, will be. And of course, the updates will require an extensive amount of um, consultation with uh, culturally affiliated and or uh, geographically affiliated tribes. And um, I think it's not at all clear that uh, we have an idea of exactly what is involved there. So um, <clears throat> one of the recommendations or part of the recommendations then is that the, uh, in addition to the ongoing consultations with Indian tribes and Native Hawaiian organizations, the Department of Interior should undertake meetings with representatives of museums and federal agencies to describe and assess the specific activities needed to update NAGPRA inventories, including the development of realistic financial and scheduling information. <coughs> um, we had some discussion about that at the last meeting with the assistant secretaries um, regarding their sense of uh, additional resources and additional budget items uh, for future uh, fiscal years. And it seemed to me at least that they both recognized that something like that may be, may be needed. <clears throat> uh, one of the things I think we, uh, we need, and I would suggest we want to recommend uh, to the secretary on this particular matter, is that that information uh, should be put together and, and it, it needs input from, uh, from tribes, from uh, museums and from federal agencies in terms of <coughs> excuse me, what the workload has already been and what it is anticipated to be uh, if the um, update of the, the night inventory says is described in 10.10 uh, in goes forward. And that federal, the federal government, the federal agencies responsible for implementing um, NAGPRA and the, uh, the, the transfer, the repatriation of um, cultural items uh, uh, needs to take some of that financial responsibility on. So, excuse me, that is a, a quick review 
of um, something like the text for a recommendation to the secretary on this particular part of the regulations for the uh, committee to uh, uh, to discuss uh, at this at the current meeting, the meeting we're at right now. Is there any questions or, or comments that um, members have on uh, on this? Honor, go ahead. Frank, could you just go up one page? Pardon me? Or Melanie, I'm not sure who has that up. Could you go to the previous page? That's page one. Um, <clears throat> just one of the questions I had, or maybe something for the committee to consider, um, given these first few points, and in particular, the first one. Uh, this seems to be talking a lot about um, mutually beneficial um, work. And I feel like the point of the procedures within NAGPRA are not necessarily to find things that are mutually bene beneficial, uh, but to return ancestors and cultural items. Um, so maybe there's a way this could be reworded, uh, continues to be on repatriation. Um, I think talking about um, possible outcomes, positive outcomes, I mean, the main one to me <laughs> is transferring Native American human remains and associated funerary objects uh, uh, to tribes and NHOs uh, and uh, the rest of the cultural items. But um, I don't know necessarily that uh obtaining a load of information about tribal histories uh native hawaiian histories um ancient histories or that there should be any kind of bifurcation of ancient history and tribal they're all connected um should happen i i think really the focus there needs to be on um, getting native ancestors and cultural items home. All of these other things, of course, um, are up to the tribes to decide if they want to share them within this process. And I think just emphasizing um, that these are things that do not have to be shared um, uh, to obtain repatriation, but that it's certainly up to the tribes to do it is important. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I, I will point, let me point out that, and it, it probably, as you say, should have been the very first point, but the second bullet there is exactly the point that you make about the primary uh, intent of NIGRA. And, and um, I think it's, it's, it is mutually beneficial in that I don't believe the museums or agencies uh, want to hold on to uh, materials that um, they shouldn't be holding on to it. And they shouldn't be holding on to it because of uh, the, the uh, implementation of, of NAGPRA, but also just in terms of what um, other uses of it they, they have the opportunity to make. So I, I do think that is a mutually beneficial uh, outcome. Um, and I think one of the important things about ensuring that there's sufficient time and money to, to accomplish the updating is that we want to be also sure that, that um, the returns are made to the, the appropriate or the most appropriate uh, tribes or Native Hawaiian organizations uh, involved. So I, I do see some, some benefit there. And I, I take your point that um, the, you know, a reordering at least of uh, some of the possibilities, and these are just just possibilities that we've that we've talked about as to why 
um, all of the organizations involved in implementing, implementing uh, NAGPRA want to see this process completed and done and done you know, in a timely fashion and done in a, in a correct, appropriate fashion. I just, I also think that um, incorporating a point about ensuring um, the confidentiality of tribes and any shows in this process is important. And I'll probably also be making recommendations a little bit later pertaining to that um, uh, in our congressional report. Uh, but I just don't want to lose sight um, of, of how important that is in, in these consultations that we have. Um, thanks. Thank, thank you. Uh, other comments? Well, then. Um, sorry, I just had another one. Yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Before we move on, um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to let's see where it is. Uh, I think it's under number three in particular. Um, it's, it's referencing uh, updating inventories without. Um, you know, having this be construed as an authorization for the initiation of new scientific studies. Um, I, I think um, I think that's important. Uh, I would also, you know, recommend that even studies done on <laughs> uh, prior um, or information looked at on prior studies that has not been authorized by tribes uh, should should not occur. Um, I also wanted to note in the chat that Angela Garcia Lewis has mentioned there should be a prohibition on the physical touching, handling, or physical modification of the ancestors and protected objects without written permission of the consulting tribes. Um, and I think that's something also uh, to be mindful of. Thank you. Other comments? Tim, go ahead. Um, I was looking at your, uh, this is the top of the second page, so discussion draft recommendations on updating NAGPRA inventories. And you start off here by the schedule and that some institutions will likely be able to comply with the two-year deadline, but others will not. But that got me to look over at what the draft proposal says about extensions. And I noticed that it says that an, a request for an extension should be sent to the Park Service, but it doesn't say who grants the extension. And under the current regulations, the extensions must be granted by the secretary. And under their delegation, that can go down, I believe, to the uh, Assistant Secretary for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. I know that in 96, those extensions were all signed off by the assistant secretary. And I believe that's uh, important to keep that at a very high level uh, for extensions to be determined. So I think it's a use, I think it would be useful to add here that there needs to be a provision for extensions, which is acknowledged in the draft proposal, but that the extensions should be reviewed by the secretary or the uh, higher levels of the department. Where would you suggest we put that in this particular document, Tim, if we were to come up with a, something based on this discussion draft recommendations, would you see that as a, a bullet? 
Yeah, either a bullet under the first three that you've got or a, a sentence after that that just says mm -hmm. provisions of, you know, there are maybe situations where extensions are necessary and that it, I, I would propose that the regulations need to say that the extensions are not are not awarded by by line staff, but mm -hmm. by the political appointees, by the assistant secretary, or by the secretary. The current reg says the secretary, and that's delegated within the departmental manual down to the assistant secretary. But I think that's an appropriate level for this kind of important determination. Mm -hmm. I think that was also the level that was used in the in the uh, the initial uh, round of uh, requests for extensions. I, I recall doing briefings for the assistant secretary on that. And I recall writing the letters. Right. All right. I believe there were 56 of them. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. John, you have your hand up. Please go ahead. Oh, John, you're on mute. How about now? There you Can go. You hear me? Okay. There you go. Yes, right. thank you. Sure. Uh, not trying to, to to back it up because I think it's still relevant to our our conversation. Uh, uh, we've had uh, another, uh, I guess, a, a comment I was noticing in our in the chat portion about um, uh, about sort of the um, how uh, cultural information uh, might be uh, protected. Um, I know that's not a, a particular discussion right now, and in, in you know, in at, uh, with this particular document, but I feel like it's it's relevant. Uh, Honor mentioned it uh, earlier, uh, and for uh, the individual for who who has a question about this, um, we've uh, we this has been a topic for this committee, at least this committee, on a, a couple of, of more than a few rounds or a few times since I've served on this committee, and it's been involved. It's been one of our recommendations uh, in the past few years in our report to, to Congress on how the issue of uh, information, uh, especially uh, uh, culturally sensitive information during a consultation might be protected during the, the course of, or how, how that's gonna be protected uh, with, you know, to that, to the consultation process, even post that, that process. So I didn't wanna uh, to, to bring that to light that this is a, I've seen this a question it, as it relates, certainly relates to, to uh, uh, I think what we're talking about in this and not uh, again, not to backpedal, but how this this could be another further consideration for in uh, maybe duty of care or something you know, to that to that measure. Uh, not to add further further recommend further thought to that that deeper recommendation there. But I I, I didn't want to move too far for without uh, wanting to mm -hmm. answer this person. This, this is a very real. It's and she's not the only or they're not the only one with with this concern. This member I think members of the committee have 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 had. Uh, uh, have uh, had uh, communication with, especially those from the from native communities about how information how is is. Uh, I would think not just now uh, going forward, but how information in the past via consultations or uh, repatriation processes is going to be addressed or or protected. So I didn't want to bring bring that up, you know, to to, to answer that. Or that maybe not the, the the greatest answer to that to that question, but just to, to put that forth that it has been considered by this, at least this committee. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John. And I wanna uh, thank them for their, their question and their concern. So thank, thank you, you for yes. bringing that, pointing that out. Thanks for bringing it up as well. Shelby, yes, please go ahead. Um, yeah, Frank, um, I'm looking on this, the, the second top of the second page as well. Um, and um, under your third bullet point, um, this is regarding funding for, for the NAGPRA update uh, on the NAGPRA inventories. Um, I'm not quite clear on what this sentence is trying to say. Um, it's a little confusing to me that uh, the funding that federal agencies responsible for implementing NAGPRA are able to provide to tribes, Native Hawaiian organizations, museums, and other organizations 
that curate NAGPRA remains in objects in public agencies with collections that must comply with the law? Oh, it was, um, it was just, uh, it was supposed to, and the intent was that it would, was referring to uh, funding that was being provided uh, at, at present or how much would be, would be, how much would be provided or could be provided uh, based upon new requirements uh, for the updating of NAGPRA inventories. These specifically, three all, oh, specifically for federal agencies, right? Well, no, it'd be funding that federal agencies um, like the Department of the Interior through the National NAGPRA program uh, provide to Indian okay. tribes, Native Hawaiian organizations and, and museums. That was, um, that was really the specific reference to federal agencies there, not um, um, that was that was really the 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 intent was to to think about that. But I, rather than just identifying the Department of Interior as the source, it, it occurred to me that uh, you know other departments that have uh, overall responsibilities for complying with NAGPRA, like the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Defense, uh, Tennessee Valley Authority, might actually also provide. A funding um, beyond that funding that would just be for their for their staff to uh, accomplish uh, NAGPRA. So those three those three bullet points sort of try to list the kinds of things that will affect how uh, quickly or how uh, long a time uh, different museums, different agencies will take to comply with uh, whatever the new requirements are going to look like. Does that, does that help? It, it's it, this, you know, it's a, it's a draft. So mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not intended um, as, as uh, something that we would just uh, pick up and send to the secretary. Okay. It requires editing of ver various sorts, including mm -hmm. probably grammar and spelling in certain places. Although I did try to at least check that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Tim, you have a, a comment? Did... Yes, Tim, go ahead. As a, as a possible suggestion to clarify that sentence a little bit, uh, if you could say the funding that the United States is able to provide, because it's all federal funds. Mm -hmm. And I think Part of the confusion may be that there's too many federal agencies in this sentence. Mm, that could be. And then public agencies at the end, I'd change that to federal agencies. Right, right. And that might clarify it a little bit. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Are other uh, immediate comments at this point? Well, um, Madam DFO, I do uh, see now that we are at 1.30. So we've been going for uh, an hour and a half or so. We might want to take a 10 minute break right now and then come back and uh, we can go through this paragraph by paragraph uh, as a discussion draft and determine whether we want to send it or not, um, or we want to, uh, how we want to uh, uh, revise it. But, but before that, uh, Honor, you have a comment and then Tim. Go ahead, go ahead, Honor. Um, just on that third bullet point, instead of saying curate, maybe possess or control um, to go in there. Where would, could you, could you do that again? The third bullet on this, the top yep. of the second page. Uh, I think I'm on the second page. Discussion draft recommendation yes. on updating NAGPRA inventory. Yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't like the idea of curating uh, people. <laughs> so uh, maybe okay. we can insert possession. Different verb, yes. Possessor control, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Tim, did you, you had your, oh, okay, that was the, it was from the last, uh, from your last comment. 
So, uh, Madam DFO, have a, a two minute break right now, and then we'll come back and uh, continue our discussion of this uh, particular draft. Okay. Okay, thank you all. Please, uh, please come back in 10 minutes. Thanks.
If you could um, start to come back, turn on your cameras, please. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, how, how would you like to proceed? There is about an hour and 20 minutes left. Um, I, uh, let's see, is everybody back, all the members back? Yes. So um, what one thing we might do, one way we might handle this is to go um, paragraph by paragraph, perhaps, through the discussion draft of the recommendations and see if there's agreement on, on the committee to move forward with, uh, with this text uh, or with this text with some editing that, that, uh, that we can do or can be done subsequent to the meeting. And then after that, uh, Madam Chair I, or Madam DFO, I don't know that we've got another section of the regulations that we're ready to review, but I could ask the committee members if they do, and we can talk about that. I think we should leave uh, 15 minutes at least for the uh, retiring members to talk about their recommendations or topics they think are important for the annual report to Congress. And then um, <coughs> leave 10 and then have public comment at that point. Okay. Okay. Um, would, would you like to share the screen so you can make edits, Frank, or how would you like? I you know, I can't do that from my screen. So if, uh, if you're able to, or someone else is willing to. I'm happy to share the document. I would hesitate though to, to make edits. Um, I prefer the committee um, we're making textual edits. I'd do it, but I just about killed my laptop last time, so I will defer. Thanks, Tim. Okay, well, I will share the the draft that you sent, Frank, and um, I will mm -hmm. leave it to to you to m make any necessary edits. Okay. <clears throat> okay, then what I'd actually like to do is start with page two, which is set up more as a uh, possible recommendation. So if we could go to page two. We've already had some suggestions about changing the text in the in the first paragraph to make it clearer what's being intended there. Are there other? Well, let me start with this. The I think the sentence that the uh, that um, National NAGPRA program uh, that Melanie asked us to. Uh, focus on uh, in developing a recommendation is that the very first sentence uh, in this draft, an update of the existing NICRA inventory should be required and there should be a schedule for this. Uh, so that's really where I got started. Shelby, you have a comment. Why don't you go ahead? 
Um, yeah, this has to do with that third bullet again. Mm -hmm. um, there was actually a comment in the chat and, and um, Honor had, had brought up um, the term curate. Right. Um, there was a recommendation in or a suggestion in the chat that I thought was was very um, appropriate and it it was have custody of instead of possess or control but um, organizations that have physical custody of um, NAGPRA remains and and objects and that was well, good I, that was made just before we we took a right break before we broke. as well I, and I made a note of that as well so I think that would be would be good and I thank the commenter for yes. uh, providing that suggestion okay all right so the, then there are a number of comments that have been made and that I have noted in my paper copy here um, any any other suggestions on that first paragraph with the uh, with the three bullets? And the concept, the idea that that the uh, if in reality, some museums and agencies are going to be able to do this, maybe in a shorter time frame than than others will be, and others will take will take longer. That it's very it's 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 likely to be variable, but that the committee does agree with the, the initial statement that updating the NAGPRA inventories should be required and that there should be a schedule to do this. That's the main point of that of that first paragraph. And so we have agreement on that or? May I ask, does the extension process allow for that variability? It's, it's unclear to me how you would both have a schedule and allow <laughs> for variability. Well, I don't know, actually, Madam uh, Madam DFO. That would, but that's something that ought to be considered. And it it may be that there that there isn't a variability in schedule, but that the schedule is longer than anticipated in the in the draft of the the regulations. Honor, yes, please go ahead. Um, I, I understand uh, why a date certain was placed on this. Um, you know, we're over 30 years into the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, and there are still entities that haven't come into compliance with the law. Um, so I, I think that, uh, it's really important to ensure that there are enough funds available. I'm in complete agreement with that. Um, but I don't um, necessarily think that there should be an absence of a date um, to comply with the law. Uh, I mean, we don't want to be uh, waiting for our ancestors and cultural items to come home in perpetuity um, as Native people. So, uh, and I, I realize some of this has been discussed um, in the previous meeting, but I, I just urge the committee to also keep that in mind. Um, and then under the fourth paragraph, um, I'm not sure that that's necessary to have incorporated. Um, I'd suggest deleting it. Thank you, Honor. And the first paragraph shouldn't be read to suggest that, that there would be that there wouldn't be a, a deadline. There would be, there would be a deadline. It, it might be that it's more than two years. It might be that it's variable depending upon size of the size of the inventory. And I you know it's so so 
I could it could be that could be added to the the paragraph that they're you know that that a a a uh, a date certain or a certain date is uh, is something that we see as important, but that you know um, there may be some additional information that needs to be gathered for that to for that to be determined. Um, so let me. And just the um, just to clarify, also this section I'm suggesting deleting uh, begins with "no one should want to see." I just I don't know that that's necessary. Yes, yes, I got I got I made a note on that. See, I see that. Any other comments or questions on the first paragraph? Tim, go ahead. You're muted. Sorry if I circle back. Um, up to the top when it gets to the issue of, of timing. Um, that first sentence updates of existing NAGPRA inventory should be required and there should be a schedule for this. I'd actually recommend changing that um, to there should be deadlines for this not just to schedule, but deadlines. Okay, that, that's And fine. then we had talked a little bit about the extension process. I wouldn't put it after your three bullets. I'd put it after the paragraph that starts the July 2021 draft uh, proposed revisions. And then a sec another paragraph after that, that indicates that there, there is a provision for extensions mm -hmm. and it's in the current draft proposal, but I do think it's important. I feel it's very important that it, we tell, we make very clear that the decisions on whether an extension is awarded needs to be made at the highest level within the department. And the current language in the regulations makes it very clear of what kind of information needs to be provided in order to substantiate that request for an extension. And it needs to be a lot of information. So it's not just, hey, we're not done, I need more time. Mm -hmm. It's, I not, we're not done, here's why we're not done, Mm -hmm. um, here's what we need to get done. Here's the money we'll need to get this done. And here's how we're gonna raise that money to get it done. So it needs to be a very worked out plan. And do you think that the section as it's currently drafted does that sufficiently? Uh, the section as currently drafted deals specifically with inventories. So there may be some tweaking that needs to be done in order to accommodate summaries as well. But I do think it needs to be excruciatingly clear that this is not an easy process to get an extension. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, you mentioned summaries. I thought this was only a discussion about inventories. Um, you're right. Um, I actually would include it on summaries, though, but we can do that at a different point. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Honor, and then I think, John, you had your hand up as well. Honor, why don't you go first, and then John. Sorry, I didn't mean to keep my hand up. I'll lower okay. It. All right. Okay. John, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, uh, that was a, Melanie answered part of my question, uh, but I did want to follow up on what Tim had said, and I guess something that we've sort of addressed, well, it's been addressed in some of these comments, but, uh, uh, and Honor brought it up too, but I think we're well aware that some places are well behind on this, this, this process. And so I think we, we I think everyone recognizes that, that there, this are gonna be new, new work for, for everyone uh, involved, tribes, museums, um, but, 
if you've made little pro progress toward that in in 30 years or maybe done the minimum or not even the bare minimum um, in terms of that, um, you know, man, <laughs> that you're going to, it's going to be, it's going to be, you're going to have a tough time, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so to Tim's question about the extension, um, you, you're probably going to have to own up to that in the extension. If you are one of the, if you're one of these entities who has done or who has accomplished the, the bare minimum in terms of working with tribes or, you know, how your inventories are, the state of your, the state of that particular. Thank you, John. So, um, Tim, you've got your hand up. Go ahead. You're muted now, Tim. I'll You're put muted. it in the text, but I'll just read it so that it's in the record. Um, the current regulations say that inventories must be completed not later than November 16th, 1995. Any museum that has made a good faith effort to complete its inventory, but which will be unable to complete the process by this deadline may request an extension of the time requirement from the secretary. An indication of good faith effort must include, but not necessarily be limited to, the initiation of active consultation and documentation regarding the collection and the development of a written plan to carry out the inventory process. Uh, minimum components of an inventory plan are a definition of the steps required, the position titles of the person responsible for each step, a schedule for carrying out the plan, and a proposal to obtain the requisite funding. That's the current standard for inventory extensions. And, and that same exact standard is repeated in the draft text. The same elements of a plan are, are on page 38 of, of the draft text. Does it say that, and pardon me if I've missed it, does it say that it's awarded by the secretary? Um, no, that, that is the one piece that you've raised that is not mentioned. Who yeah, that I, think is, that I think is an important thing that we should emphasize. Okay, but that was your point. I mean, I just wanted to reiterate that what you just read is, is, is encapsulated. It's revised slightly for grammar and format. Yeah, yeah, understand. Thanks. Okay. Um, Melanie, what's the number on that? It's 10.10 10 what? 10.10 uh, 10 D5. D5? Yeah, D as in dog. Page okay. 38. Page 38, thank you. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, um, Moving on, Tim, your hand is still up there on the on the computer thing. Is that? I think it's. I think you just haven't taken it off. Yep. Thank you. Um, then the next the next paragraph, which would be paragraph three, there's a need for careful, well informed, and accurate description, an assessment of real of real uh, time and cost requirements. Does anybody have comments, concerns about that? This would be a way. Uh, we have we have actually been trying to get uh, this sort of information ourselves. This would require the department to actually undertake a um, an, an an initiative to pull that information together by uh, discussing with museum representatives as uh, as well as others involved the what the costs are likely to be or time requirements are likely to be. So there'd be a basis for. Uh, a schedule. And a set of deadlines or or a deadline. Tim, go ahead. Um, in terms of the consulting parties on this, I'd probably add um, Indian tribes, native wine organizations, and national scientific and national museum organizations. 
in terms of costs. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, can I just clarify the suggestion here from the review committee is that the department uh, seek input from museums and federal agencies on the appropriate timeline for updating inventories? And costs, I think is the, yes, I think I'm both, that would, that, yes, that was the intent. Any, any other comments on that? Okay, then um, the next paragraph, uh, paragraph five, this is the, paragraph four, I guess it is. This is the one that, that honor um, objects, objects to. Um, I'm sorry, it, I just wanna step back and assess what we're, so the, the full committee is in agreement that museums and federal agencies should provide timelines for updating inventories? Not provide, but the, no, I think the, the idea that's intended in that paragraph is that the department should reach out and collect information from those, from those organizations and then make a judgment uh, based upon the quality of that information, the extent of that information um, as to what a reasonable, we've used that term before, uh, schedule might be. So that in fact, what many people agree needs to get done can get done. And, um, and people have some expectation that they will be supported in getting it done. Honor, yes, please go ahead. I think my biggest concern in this, um, section has to do with um, ensuring that there are funds available um, to proceed forward with this process. Uh, I, I reiterate that I'm, I am concerned about not providing deadlines. What, <sighs> this section is unclear to me um, what that process might look like. Uh, it seems like it's going into another consultation process, uh, potentially. And I just, I think ongoing consultations, um, of course, are one thing, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out if, if you're suggesting that um, the department launch into another um, consultation about timing with um, agencies and museums about what they can accomplish at this point, you know, 30 plus years later, um, or it, it's just unclear to me. Well, I deliberately didn't use the word consultation, um, but rather a series of meetings is I think the way it's phrased there. Um, John, you have a yes. comment? Uh, yeah, that was, uh, Honor asked the question, uh, had asked the question, uh, I think I had asked that question of, uh, during last week's meeting to, to Melanie in regards, or Madam DFO, to, uh, in regards to uh, the, the timelines that were, that were, that had, that had been, that had been come up with uh, for the, for the, the draft, just, you know, the, uh, how those had, how those had been generated or, or, or come to. And so I, uh, I tend to, you know, to agree about uh, deadline, about having these very sort of set deadlines or as the, as they appear, and then we'll see what the, the, the comments are, because again, as we point out, we're, we're 30 years, 30 plus years into the, into this process. And while we, we, it certainly bears to, to hear the, the concerns, I also think are come from the, the position of the, of, from the tribes that this has been, long overdue and so for that part of the consultation more more discussion with with museums to determine or other institutions to to determine what 
what time frames are going to be reasonable. So this goes back to, not, again, not to go back too far, but again, back to our further discussion on duty of care, what one is going to view or deem as, as reasonable uh, in terms of, of some of these deadlines. I think that I, I certainly would think that, or I, I know that from the, from the tribal side or tribal perspective that, uh, you know, this we're beyond a reasonable, you know, a, a beyond a reasonable accountability, I think, or a level of accountability now to uh, why, you know, why things haven't, why things haven't progressed. And so I, you know, I, I, again, I, in support of uh, putting a, you know, supporting what, you know, maybe what those deadlines are. And then I guess, I guess, I don't know if that's going to gar uh, garner for the discussion, but I'd certainly support, you know, very tangible uh, deadlines seeing as how we're 30 plus years into the, in, into this, into this law and its intent. Thanks, John. Honor, I'm sorry, did you, do you have additional comment? Okay. Well, I, I agree. I mean, I think there do, there do need to be uh, deadlines. What, what I'm, um, what I've proposed in this draft is that uh, we need some um, firmer information about what, um, from the perspectives of the museums and the agencies and the, and the other uh, organizations that have physical custody of, uh, of NAGPRA um, uh, cultural items uh, as to their, what they, what they would, would need, what they would, would need to uh, carry out the requirements of the law. Now, in, you know, in part, there are in fact new requirements. That's what the updating is uh, is also creating a, a set of um, a set of documents that need to be considered that haven't necessarily been considered in the past. Were certainly not considered as part of the uh, well. I wouldn't say they have not been considered in the past, but they're um, they weren't required to have been considered. Some of them probably were in the initial um, uh, inventories that were that were completed. But there is new work that needs to be done. And again, this gets back, I think, to the concern that um, things things be done right and they come out right for all for all concern, in particular for tribes and Native Hawaiian organizations who, above all, want to see you know um, the return, um, the transfer, whatever the correct verb is, of uh, Magpra remains and cultural items to the to the proper. A tribe or Native Hawaiian organization, or tribes and Native Hawaiian organizations. So the idea here is that we don't seem to have very uh, good specific information about what that might entail, and there's you know there's a way of getting it, and then uh, the Department of Interior making a judgment about the quality of of what they get and coming up with a uh, a, a schedule of deadlines that uh, that can in fact be be reached so that things get done the way they should be done. That's that's really the intent here is to um, say to the secretary, this is something we think is needed. So having said that, and unless there's a disagreement, which is certainly Feel free to disagree if you if you don't uh, with that with moving that forward. If not, um, Honor didn't like the next paragraph. The no one should want to see. Um, can I ask you, Honor, why that is is problematic? I mean, I think it's I think it's true that no one wants um, to see people. I just thought it was in, superfluous. In doing this. Yeah, I just thought it was superfluous for the intent of this section. Um, but going back to that prior paragraph, um, I wonder if just saying that um, an informed cost assessment should be undertaken by the Department of the Interior and OMB um, to fully um, uh, develop realistic financial and scheduling financial costs for um, updating the NAGPRA inventories, if that would take care of things. Um, 
I just think uh, with that next section, also no one should want to see a procedure required by new regulations that is impossible to achieve. I think that goes without um, saying, I don't know why it's necessary there. Uh, to me, it suggests that um, the application of a deadline um, on coming into compliance with this segment is impossible to achieve. And I'd like to avoid that. So I just recommend deleting that entire paragraph. I don't think it's necessary. Um, do other members have uh, opinions on that or suggestions? Okay, well, um, should it be deleted then? Everybody agree with that? I don't see anybody saying one way or the other. Well, let's move on down. The last, uh, really the last two paragraphs, one, the one is very short. They're both, they both deal with uh, funding. Comments on that? Suggestions for changes? Everybody does agree with that then? Okay. Oh, Tim, go ahead, sorry. Um, just in terms of a phrase to use there to strengthen that, I would recommend something along the lines that said, that we don't want to we don't want this to be an unfunded regulatory mandate. Okay. Um, which I which I have to uh, acknowledge the majority of the work done on the original um, inventories was in fact an unfunded mandate because the regs didn't, or the grants program didn't come into effect until FY94. Okay, thanks for that phrase. Maybe can we be put in there someplace? That, that's a suggestion and someone else just suggested about uh, not having passive um, grammar, so. We'll look at that as well. Uh, Shelby, yes, you have a comment. Go ahead. Yeah, I I uh, agree with Tim as well as the um, the um, the addition in the chat. Um, I would suggest just combining these two um, into one um, one paragraph specifically um, addressing funding. Okay, that's easily done. Um, the, they were in two, actually, I thought about that a little bit when I was drafting this thing. And uh, I thought emphasizing the first by having it set, set off alone uh, that you know more resources were gonna be needed to uh, accomplish this in a way that everybody would like to see it, see it done in. And then uh, where those monies were going to, where a substantial percentage of those monies would come from is a, a follow on to that. So that was the rationale originally, but um, we could do it either way. Tim, go ahead. Tim, I left, you, my, hand, I left my hand up. There you go. Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, then I have made 
comments on my paper copy of changes that the committee has suggested and can revise this as a recommendation to go to the secretary along with, <coughs> excuse me, the recommendations that we just uh, went over with for 10.1. And I will do that uh, unless I see objections at this point. Okay. Um, now, so that's this, <clears throat> that's the text on the second half, on the second page of, of what you, of what we, of what I handed out or what we handed out. The whole first page is basically background. Is there anything on the first page that uh, any members think should, should be woven into the, the text of the recommendation or is it just uh, background information that um, tries to set up the, the, uh, the actual draft uh, discussion, a uh, draft uh, recommendation? So is there anything on the first page that you would like to be sure gets into the recommendation or is added to the recommendation itself? Tim, go ahead. I think the um, number two, we've talked about the consultation issue elsewhere, and that is the definition that's in the proposed draft. Yes. So I don't know if we need to talk about that here. We could, that's fine. Um, but. I, that actually is a significant change. And I think if we agree with that, which I think we do, um, we should say that. We should support that. So I think that should probably go in it, in what we send off. And then the second one on the, this is basically the definition of documentation from the statute which is not in the current regulations, nor is it in the draft proposal. So I would recommend we include that too. Because these are new things. Consultation, I thought about that. I separated these two because, well, I separated the consultation one uh, explicitly, because it does apply broadly throughout the uh, the draft uh, proposed regulation. So it didn't seem to me, it seemed to me if we were going to make a comment about it, um, it more appropriately would come in our discussion of uh, definitions or in a discussion of, of definitions. There's um, the, the research uh, one, um, is more easily attached to updating, updating the inventory. So it's that relatively easy to place that in uh, in in the uh, in the actual draft recommendation. Um, I'm it, sorry, it, just to it, clarify, Tim. It it is in both the existing regulations and the draft. The same language from the Act on 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 research and what documentation means. In the existing regulations, it's under 10.9 E5. And in the draft text, it's under 10.10 C3. So it, it is in both places. In 10.10 of the, of the draft, Melanie, what is the, the letter designation? C, as in C. Cat. Cat, okay. And then the numbers after that? Number three. Thank you. Yeah, you're right, Melanie, thanks. Thank you. Keeping um, it up. I don't, I don't think it is uh, hurtful for us to include that here. I didn't catch that, Tim, the last part. I don't think it is hurtful for us to include that here as well in our discussion to make it very clear that that is the standard that Congress gave us. Okay.
Any any other comments on that? Is there and is there general agreement on that by by the other members? Or any questions about it? Okay. Well, I will work on that also. Okay. Then, with that, um, in terms of this meeting and the um, discussion of sections of the regulations, are there any other sections that members would like to make a comment upon or suggest a, a, a comment that the full committee might want to include in sending um, and what it sends forward to the secretary at this point? Okay, if not, then we will focus on 10.1 and <clears throat> section of 10.10 .10 on updating. Barnaby, do you have a comment? You're, no, no, oh. I have no comment. Okay. okay, thanks, Barnaby. You're on my computer screen, you're, the phone icon just showed up and I thought maybe that meant you had raised your hand or something, so. Thanks, thanks for hanging in there with the technology. Okay, then. Um, We'll, we'll focus on those two sections and subsections at, at this point. I originally said um, that I would do uh, what drafting might be needed on the 10.1, uh, but actually given the amount of things that need to be changed on the 10.10, uh, uh, I wanted to ask um, if, a, if another a member uh, would be willing to just do the final uh, text, final revisions to the text of 10.1. Okay, Tim, thank you. That would be great. I'd appreciate it very much. And then are there any other sections that anybody wants to introduce a comment about at this point of the regs, draft, draft regs? I don't see any. Okay, then, um, Madam DFO, we did want to uh, take uh, 15 minutes or so to give the uh, retiring members an opportunity to talk about their um, recommendations regarding topics for um, the annual report to Congress. Can we move to that right now? Actually, if, if it's okay, we, we do have one request for public comment, and it's it's been um, pending for some time, so I'd like to um, do public comment first, if that's okay. So do the public comment first, do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then and then we'll do the um, the uh, retiring members. Yes. Okay, all right. So um, if you would like to make public comment, you can raise your hand um, or put your name in the chat. The first public comment we have is from Ziola Kathleen Bromley. Um, your hand has been raised for some time, Ms. Bromley, and, and I've you should be allowed, you should be able to unmute yourself now. Miss um, Bromley, if you're still with us. Okay, we we do have another public comment, so I'll move on to that. But um, Ms. Bromley, if, if you would still like to make a public comment, you may um, you may do so. Uh, the next hand raised is from Colleen Medicine. Colleen, you should be able to unmute. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Great, uh, miigwech, uh, Madam DFO and uh, the review committee members for time to speak this evening. Um, as Melanie mentioned, my name is Colleen Medicine and I am the program director with the Association on American Indian Affairs. And we wanted to take a moment to extend an invitation to the review committee members and everyone listening today to our eighth annual repatriation conference. And it's going to take place October 11th through the 13th. And it's hosted by our good friends at the Pokagon Band of Potawatomi in New Buffalo, Michigan. 
Um, and this year's theme is reactivating our ancestral connections. Um, and the call for session proposals is currently open. And uh, you can, as always, get more information under our events tab on our website at indianaffairs.org. And again, I just really appreciate um, having a moment to speak to you all tonight and invite you to our eighth annual repatriation conference. And that concludes my comments. Miigwech and miyu. Thank you very much, Colleen. We had several um, uh, comments in the chat. They mostly related to a discussion that the committee was having. And as many of you referenced them during your discussion, I will um, make them a part of the record um, uh, for this meeting, but I won't go through and, and read them at this time, but I will ensure that they are part of the record. Thank you, Madam Chair. And you, that means you'll, you'll send a, a copy uh, to the committee members as well, the way you did the last time. That was very Yes, I will do that. But the way they'll be attached to the record is as uh, each of you had during your discussion referenced them, they'll be um, a, a part of the, the file. Thank you. Um, Melanie, just for a point of clarification on our part, for the review committee members um, now rotating off the committee, is this the last day for any kind of uh, participation as review committee members, or will that be extended to the end of the month? When when do things positively end? Um, so it, it tomorrow um, is the the last day of your term. Um, your terms were um, uh, through May tenth. Thank you. Um, twenty twenty two. Um, but this is a good opportunity to remind everyone um, that we do have a, a solicitation for nominations that is open um, for various seats on the review committee. Um, in addition, I will note that, as you all know, the review committee must uh, take actions um, collectively in public. Um, if honor, if, if there are, uh, or John or, or Barnaby, if if there are um, things that you would like to address that you feel did not get addressed, you can certainly do so as individual citizens, um, either through communication to the department um, or additional comments as, as individuals. Um, there's certainly no reason you're precluded from um, that kind of effort on your personal behalf. Um, but today with the end of this meeting would be the, the last actions you could take as a member of the review committee. Thanks, Melanie. Um, seeing as we don't have any more public comments, and I don't know if uh, Ms. Ziola was able to come back on, I would recommend, Frank, that we move on uh, to make sure we can get some input in for the uh, report to Congress. I think that's, uh, we're at that time right now. So um, we have, a 30 minutes left in the in the scheduled meeting. And uh, uh, we'll go ahead and invite the uh, review committee members um, to discuss uh, rec their recommendations on uh, the annual report to Congress. Honor, you, you're, you uh, are on my screen right here. So uh, do you wanna do the, be the first one? Sure, and I'll try and get through things quickly for the rest of the review committee members to comment. Um, uh, earlier today, we had a question come up about um, FOIA uh, and maintaining confidentiality of tribes. One of my recommendations uh, for the report to Congress would be recommending um, an exemption in FOIA uh, that would exempt, um, um, exempt items that were discussed confidentia confidentially with tribes and lineal descendants. 
and NHOs um, to prevent them from being um, shared under the Freedom of Information Act. Um, there are a number of also NAGPRA amendments uh, that were suggested uh, under the US Senate Committee on Indian Affairs through NAFPO. And I am copying this here. Um, and I would hope that we would uh, consider that in a report to Congress and attach it. Uh, I had some very good information uh, as well included within it. Um, uh, my next recommendation, of course, is for increased funding for the National NAGPRA program and for um, uh, repatriation grants. Um, I also share, uh, I've shared this extensively over my term uh, about concerns about whether there are investigations and prosecutions actually happening under NAGPRA and that um, I have enormous concerns about whether NAGPRA is actually being used to uh, the extent of the law and hopefully there isn't a hierarchy of enforcement occurring, but I think data needs to be collected on this um, and that the uh, public should know about it. Um, so that's another recommendation. Um, and my final recommendation has to do with the presentations we've heard a number of times from Emily Paulus having to do with tracking of funds for uh, NAGPRA within the agencies, uh, that there should be created line items uh, within federal agencies uh, for NAGPRA and repatriation so that the knowledge of how and if funds are being spent um, in coming into compliance with the law is actually being done. Um, and that was a good way for the review committee to also look it over as well as Congress and the Department of the Interior in the future. I think, um, you know, numbers could be provided, of course, to the review committee if, if this were done um, and we could see what's going on. The tribes could see what's going on in the public. So I urge transparency um, in that regard as well. And those are my recommendations. Widow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honor. Uh, John or Barnaby, which, who would like to would you like to would you like to make some recommendations or, or give us some recommendations of things to look at for the uh, annual report to Congress? Uh, I don't. I can't tell if you want to be. I don't want to. I know. I don't I'm, want not to sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. I can't tell. I don't want to cut the line. Why don't you go ahead and we'll give Barnaby a chance to that clean up, clean her up or. Sure. Uh, I would echo uh, some of the, the previous sentiments again, uh, particularly in terms of the, I guess, the FOIA or the access to information uh, concerns. I know we've, I think we've, that's been a part of our, uh, I think our, uh, part of our previous two reports to Congress. I think it goes, I think it bears to it continuing to be a part of, of that report um, because it's an important. I think I made reference to it earlier, um, but it, it, uh, that should apply to, again, this, not to go, go back too, too deep into our previous discussions, but this does get into uh, moving parts and elements of duty of care and part of that inventorying process. So that this is, uh, but I mean, th th it's ongoing. Um, and as I was saying earlier, it applies to not just what it, what, you know, what's, you know, what's the, it either happens in current consultations or it's information that, that museums or universities, they already, have, whether it be from these, you know, even, you know, I don't, even if it didn't take place within the past 30 years or a part of the formal sort of uh, invent or process, there's information that, um, that museums and university or whatever that have the, with these collections that are attached to those, um, that tribes, tribal, tribal nations, tribal communities would not like to be 
share. I mean, there, you know, you can, it depends on, I guess it can depend on uh, which, you know, de, uh, which museum that you're, you're talking to, but some uh, or a number of places also extend that information to other types of, you know, media, whether that be photographs or interviews or, or you know, that, that they, that they have as a part of their, uh, their, their collections, while not, I guess, potentially as a part of the, our discussions here with, with NAGPRA, but that does speak, it does speak to that. And so, um, you know, I am, you know, firmly uh, support that. And I think that should continue to be a part of, of the, of the report to, to Congress to support some measure to how that, how that's going to be accomplished, or at least it's in the mind, certainly in the mind of the, of the, of the review committee. And so I would, would urge a you know, continuing to have that a part of the of the uh, of the report until there's some sort of I don't know some sort of a response or an answer or something. But I think you know it needs to be kept you know in in the at least in the you know in, in the in the mindset. Um, and I would also I have have questions about certainly supporting um, uh, you know the types of you know funding mechanisms. I know we we gone back and forth in our discussions about. Well, well, how much you know, we don't, we don't, we, this committee doesn't particularly know that, but, but also a part of my recommendation is, and we've, we've talked about um, particularly the, the NAG for grants, so those things that, that entities or museums can, can, can have access to via those grants to achieve some of these, uh, to achieve some of these goals. But I think, you know, I, I think there, there is perhaps, or it sounds like there's an interest too, to find out those institutions who repeated, who have had repeated NAG for grants over a series of years, are they uh, have they been achieving those those goals? You know, if if you're if you're applying for, we got to whatever it is, update the. Have they been you know to what extent you know have they been working with the you know the tribes uh, to achieve the the goals? Whether it be to update the inventories or processes or activities that you know, that act that actually uh, result in you know actual repatriations. I mean that's the that's the goal. I mean that's the intent of this law, and so I think that those. The, the grants would, or at least some information, some, some data about that would, and we want to support that. So is it, is it going to, are we, is it going from point A to point, to, to point B? And I think that that in some ways also could, it, you know, could inform, could inform the committee or everyone going forward. If there is great concern about what these new regulations are, you know, what they're proposing have, you know, what's been, what's been available up to now, has it been, has it been used in that way to, you know, to, to move it, you know what I mean, to move it you know, to move things forward in the repatriation process. So, uh, you know, that might be something that the, like the review committee is, inter you know, interested in further when it's making the recommendations or as the, the recommendations become, the newer rec recommendations or, or uh, regulations become more, you know, become more apparent of what they, what they might be. So that, that would be, you know, a, something that you might consider, you know, um, whether in the upcoming report or reports in the, in, in the upcoming, in the upcoming years. Um, I know there's been mention too about the committee, uh, uh, at least uh, uh, concerning the regulations about some of the some of the letters we've received, and we there was certainly mention of of NAFPO uh, and, and you know honors recommendation, but we did receive um, uh, a letter or an extensive letter, an updated report from the Association of American Indian Affairs, who who just made a, a comment earlier. So I, I just wanted to put that out that, that we have received comment from them, and I think that those some, those uh, positions and those comments that were a part of that report that were submitted are are worth uh, would be worth uh, uh, this committee uh, considering as well as seeing as how they did they did uh, I had meetings with tribes and things so their their comments are not with, I would say not without merit for the the committee to consider while not while not existing as a formal sort of uh, uh, you know, government to government or whatever you want to, but they did work with, with tribes. And so I, I just putting that out there for, for the, if, if you're, if you're going to consider NAPO, we should, you know, the idea to consider others who have provided the, the, the review committee with a uh, comment. So I think that that, um, that's uh, worth uh, uh, considering. Um, I think that uh, that's all I have for now. If I think of anything in the course of our conversation or before it's time to sign off, I'll, 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 I'll chime in. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, John. Thank you very much. And I guess I should should also add both uh, for both you and honor, but also about Barnaby. If things come to mind subsequent to uh, the 10th of May, you all have our email addresses. So let us know what what uh, 
what moves you. Barnaby, are you online still and able to uh, maybe make some suggestions as well? Um, topics for the annual report or, uh, or other things you'd like to talk about? Barnaby, you'll need to press star six to unmute yourself. Hello there. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Barnaby. <laughs> okay, you got it. With all the discussions we've already had on the annual report, I don't think there's anything new that I can uh, recommend for the report. But I do want to uh, speak of the time during one of the meetings where I discussed the cultural affiliation with. Uh, or oral tradition being one of the criteria for determining cultural affiliation. I think that it should be some kind of investigation or inquiry by Park Service or whatever the other federal agency is that does this like they did with the reburial of ancestors on federal lands. <clears throat> to determine how determine how oral tradition really plays a positive effect or a negative effect. And I had expressed earlier that it plays a negative effect on repatriation with multiple tribes claiming affiliation <clears throat> based on oral tradition and it delays repatriation of ancestors, you know, five, six, seven, eight years. And this is just between the tribes. It takes that long because the federal agencies say, well, the tribes should get together and mutually decide whom will take the lead in repatriation, but that never works. It's just like a Protestant trying to convince a Catholic to change their religious beliefs. It's just never going to work. And that's why it takes so long for these repatriations to occur. I know, I know that other tribes have the problem in uh, back east, and I know of some tribes that have protested and contested other tribes to claim affiliation to whom they believe are their ancestors. And, you know, it's in the NAGPRA co Review Committee records of uh, all these other tribes that have come before the NAGPRA Review Committee regarding that, their protest. But some, like us here in the Southwest, we have never gone to the review committee with these kind of matters. But it's taking a long time for our ancestors to be reburied. <clears throat> and so I think there's something needs to be done or some kind of review with that oral tradition or some guidelines that takes less time for ancestors to return home and uh, be reburied. Otherwise, you know, it goes on <laughs> with different things based on that very thing. I also said that, you know, that, uh, it's our understanding of NAGPRA that each time that we request repatriation of ancestors, that we submit a repatriation document that <clears throat> identifies our affiliation, a cultural affiliation with the ancestors. But we don't know if these tribes that claim based on oral tradition, if they submit anything. But we do know too that these tribes that claim on oral tradition, that they submit their claims for repatriation after the 30 day federal register notice deadline. And so why would the Museum federal agencies or educational institutions still accept them if they're past the deadline. Uh, those are the kind of questions that, you know, in my mind need to be answered. And I think that's all I have for uh, what should be considered for the future. Thank you. Barnaby, thank you. And you've spoken eloquently about this particular problem in the past. I wonder if you have further thoughts about how how problems like that might be resolved 
or examples of resolutions where there might have been some conflict in the oral traditions, but tribes managed to work out a, a, a common way of moving forward. The only way that it's happened in the past for repatriation to be completed is the other tribe that based their affiliation purely on oral tradition had reconsidered and allowed the four Southern tribes or the Latin communities of Southern Arizona to take the lead in repatriation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it would have to be a deep, sincere, spiritual consideration on the part of those tribes to say that we claim affiliation. We know they are our ancestors, but under NAGPRA legislation, we defer to the other tribe that has evidence, 50% preponderance of evidence for cultural affiliation. Thank you. Thank, thanks for sharing that further thought. Um, any other comments by the members who will be who will be leaving the committee after after today, or or other review committee members who won't who have to come back for the next meeting. All right. Well, um, Honor, go ahead. Yes, please. Um, thank you. I just like to thank um, all the review committee members and uh, the National NAGPRA program uh, for helping to conduct these meetings and for participating in these meetings. I wish the best for everyone. Um, and I truly hope that uh, the future review committees will work toward solutions and bringing home uh, our indigenous ancestors and cultural items. And uh, I hope that uh, you know, future review committee meetings will be able to occur once again in person. Um, you know, we've all been through a difficult time here uh, with COVID over these past few years, but um, I'm glad that we've been able to hopefully move the ball a little bit um, uh, in terms of bringing uh, our people home. And um, I hope you all take care and and I look forward to being in touch with you in the future. Widow. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. John, you have something? Yeah. If, we're, if we move to this portion of the, of the, uh, of the proceedings, I guess, uh, <laughs> I'd like to, uh, uh, I wanna say, uh, I've learned a lot being on, uh, being on or serving on this committee over the past uh, uh, four years. And I certainly depart with uh, much due respect or all that I've learned from everyone that I've served on this uh, committee with, even if we've had some sort of spirited debate on, on a number of topics, hopefully no one has taken it personally to, to, to any, in any regard or respect because it was all, it was all truly meant for us to have the, the discussion out there and for not just for the, certainly the, the public to see us have that, but for us to, to, I guess, learn and grow and move things forward as, as a committee. So if anything was, hopefully nothing was taken in any sort of, uh, as com my comments were taken malicious in any sort of way, because it was meant for really uh, for us to be able to move things forward. And we all, we all represent, we all, we're all here, a part of this committee because of, of the various positions and ideas that we could, could bring to, to move things forward on this committee. So I do want to say that I depart, you know, uh, with that, but I also want to say I have due respects and much gratitude and thanks to the National NAGPRA staff and the commitment that they have to this important work and uh, everything that they do in the day-to-day -day that we don't know, that the public doesn't always know. Uh, and so I did want to, to send that I'm certainly uh, appreciative uh, of that. Uh, the way the work that they do, the important work that they do to keep things uh, moving forward, particularly during the trying times over the past almost three years now that we've been in this this great un, this great unknown. 
Um, I, again, I want to you know, have great respects and thanks to those communities, the tribal communities that have provided their comments, who shared their successes, as well as their ongoing frustrations. Um, and I would encourage them to continue to, to, to do that uh, uh, with whatever iteration of the, you know, the review committee is uh, going forward. So I want to certainly encourage that as I'm departing. And lastly, I do want to, to say a heartfelt Mado or thanks to my uh, uh, those in my tribal community who, who actually that was I uh, was was largely unknown to me. They uh, put forth my name for this nomination, and I hope that I've served them uh, well uh, and with great support for their consideration. So I do want to say uh, a, a heartfelt thank you to them as well for that for that vote of of, of confidence. So thank you, uh, everyone. Thank you, John. Thanks very much. Uh, uh, Frank, Mark? Mark. Yes, go ahead. Yes, I'd like to. I'd like to say the same as well with my appreciation and thank you to everyone in the Park Service and the tribes, the museums, everyone that's working together here to ensure that the enactment of NAGPRA was really recognized as very spiritual and significant legislation. And I know that everybody works hard. There's a great deal of effort and particularly the tribal representatives that are doing the practical implementation of NAGPRA. That's where you have the, the whole, what I call the, the respect that they demonstrate for their ancestors. I'm really proud to be a part of this being a part of the Native America. And I'm pleased to have served on the committee honorably. And our people in our way, we don't say goodbye. And I know other tribes don't. So I'll end with a good day. We'll see you again. That is all. <laughs> Thank you, Barnaby. Yes, we look forward to seeing you again for sure. Uh, Shelby, you have your hand raised, please. Um, thank you, Frank. Um, I want to just personally say what an honor it has been to serve with, with Barnaby, John, an honor. Um, I know Barnaby, but unfortunately, I never had the opportunity to meet Honor and John and in person. And um, I was hoping at some point we'd be able to manage an in-person meeting before uh, your terms came to an end. But um, in saying that, I just again wanna say, it's been such a pleasure to serve with you. And I look forward to our paths crossing at some point in the future. So, um, and thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all of your input. It's been so important. Um, I've learned so much from all of you as well. So um, I just want to th say thank you and how much I appreciate all of your input and the time that you have dedicated to being on the review committee as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Shelby. Here, here, here. Indeed. Anybody else? Okay, well, I have the last word then, except for uh, Madam uh, DFO, and extend also my appreciation and thanks to uh, Honor, John, and Barnaby, uh, and all the other um, people that make uh, this possible. But uh, the three of you in particular, since we won't get a chance to, to do this uh, in this quite this manner again, but hopefully uh, our paths will cross uh, in the future. There's more of a chance of Barnaby and I uh, meeting than, uh, than uh, the other or other two, but hopefully uh, we'll have an opportunity to do that. And I, it, it, I have learned a great deal uh, as well as everybody else from having the opportunity really to uh, engage in these discussions and work together on trying to find good solutions in uh, implementation of, of, uh, of NAGPRA. And uh, like everyone else, we all appreciate very much your, uh, the time you spent, uh, the energy and the intelligence that you've uh, committed to this. So um, great, great good luck uh, in the future and hopefully our, as I say, our paths will cross. Thank you. Uh, 
I, I will um, conclude as well with um, extending um, my thanks on behalf of the Secretary of the Interior in particular for your service to the federal government and to the Secretary over the last four years. Um, we are indebted to each of you um, for your service um, to the Secretary and, and to the federal government, so thank you. Um, with that, um, we can adjourn. Uh, are there any objections? No, I think you found the right final word there, okay. Madam DFO. We thank will, you. Uh, we will Thanks, everybody. Take care. Take care. Thank you.